how about for all of you guys, the players, say hi to the people of the VODs on YouTube, so I know where to cut, first of all. <laughs> hi, VOD squad. Hello, people of YouTube. Hello, hello, hello. people who are watching hello. us in the VOD. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, we're about to start this you lovely amazing. Campaign. Yes, sir. You are amazing. I like eating gravel. You also do like eating gravel, yes. Wait, um, I feel in danger because I'm made out of stone. Hold yes, <laughs> correct, correct. We're about to start the campaign and we're about to do something that I really like to do in um, in uh, every session. So who wants to volunteer to roll me, in this case, a D3? Because uh, we don't have courts active at the moment. So she gets a pass for this session. Do they make those? Uh, I mean, they don't, but you can roll it over here. It's, uh, you know. You can, you can just type slash roll 1d3. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All it. right. Rex Wall, yeah, you go. rolled a two. We're going to take the, the first roll. Sorry, a little faster. Yeah, my yeah, decks. that's fine. It's the dexterity. Uh, and following the list of how I have you guys in my, in my screen, um, Bip Bip. Would you be so kind as to uh, remind us what happened last session? Okay. Uh, uh, we're all loitering. We're all loitering at a festival on a town floating over a lake. Uh, and then we see like a crowd of people and we're like, oh, what's this? And then it was racist. And they had a <laughs> fish lady inside of the cage. And they're like, this fish lady's bad and so are you and they were like that's not cool uh and then she like i made the ground shake very mildly and then like she summoned a bunch of fish people and they ate everyone uh also the mayor sucks and the whole town sucks very good very good very good <laughs> hey, 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 that's what You're I told right, people. Agent. You guys give me a summary of whatever you remember. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I remember things. I'm just bad at explaining. Things. Hey, that's I feel fine. Like there was that's a bit fine. of bias against the town right there. That there is. Lot, there was a lot of. They were racist. That is all that, good. Yeah, that were, is so but good. That's besides. It. I'm too busy <laughs> eating. Uh, Gravel. Yes, this is what Kipper remembers, as Greeny mentioned in the chat right now. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, um, as we start this campaign, uh, where we left off, you guys were being escorted out of the back room of the guard uh, barrack, guard building, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, by the captain of the guard. Uh, and you guys were just done talking with the mayor of town. He had asked you to... Uh, he's given you a very big task and said that uh, his resources and the town's resources were at your disposal for you to complete this task. Of course, it is a task that he wanted to be kept secret, but of course, our very um angry friend kipper here said that uh, he was not gonna do that which you know is fine as long as the peace is restored what matters if a few rumors come to light you know and uh yes i did forget to mention this on the on the previous session i was a little nervous but i did forget to mention this on the previous session the mayor of town as you guys are heading out into the barracks with the captain of the guard he stops you and goes well uh one more thing if you don't mind there is something else they took from me a very precious artifact more more of you know more like a trinket really that has been passed down from generations to the ruler of the town uh it really holds not a lot of value for me whoa <laughs> sorry it, it so, holds not a lot of value in terms of uh, monetary gains, but uh, it's somewhat of a symbol 
gift for our town. If you guys would be able to return it, that would be great. Of course, uh, if you can't, then, you know, the safety of town is priority. And he would well, just... Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. That's how I was... Well, if you want to tell us what it looks like, that would be useful. Well, of course, sorry. Uh, it's a... Uh, well, it's a, a crest of town. Uh, you guys would know that Mistbell, the town that you guys are in, has a crest with a bell, of course, and some other uh, decorations made out of metal. But this one is special. Uh, the crest that the uh, mayor is referring to in Kipper you would know this because it is something that it is displayed on, you know, big events and stuff like that. The crest that it is being referred to is a special one. It is all made out of brass and in the center of the bell as a decoration, there is a crystal encrusted in it. It is a um, very interesting looking crystal, which when aimed at any sort of light source, you guys would be able to see a rainbow opalescent glow on it. Of course, I'm talking about Kipper. You would have seen this icon displayed. It is a, as the, as the mayor mentioned, it is kind of like a sacred kind of trinket that the rulers just pass around to the next one. We can certainly try and find it, but I do worry for what reason they stole it. Perhaps as a message of war. Well, yeah, that is, that is most likely the case. That is why I I am not too worried if the trinket is on the in their hands. But please, just save the town from another massacre. We already have enough to worry as it is. We'll do what we can. Thank you. At the very least. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And he would just let you guys go and walk around with the captain of the guard. He would take you outside into the main room, which, as I mentioned before, it's just a simple area. Couple chairs for, you know, benches and a table, a guard with a ledger, just kind of taking notes of stuff. Um, to one side, you would see a door that leads to the the prisons of the place. Uh, Keeper, you may or may not <laughs> know these prisons from the inside. <laughs> Perhaps with some of your uh, unsavory activities, you have ended. I never stayed long. Yeah, you never stayed long, correct. But, you but know... multiple times, yes. Exactly. You are no stranger to spending a night in the prison. Perhaps from, from petty thievery or whatever other shenanigans you are... Uh, you are doing. Uh, the other door would lead you to a barrack. This one would be open at this point. You would see guards coming in and out, some getting geared up with whatever uniform they, they have. Um, inside of it, of course, beds all over. Clearly, they're sleeping quarters. And the final one, it is a door that is more sturdy looking than the rest. Uh, the captain of the guard would command another to open this final door and inside you would see what would be the armory of Mistbell. Uh, for the guards you would see a lot of uniforms, armors uh, and weapons as, as well as a lot of crates and you know things piled up. So the man just gestures you in and the guard with the ledger is kind of also gestured in the man just walks by you and just kind of sits around and wherever he can find in the armory and he goes well 
town's resources are, are at your disposal. What do you guys need? I need to take note. Uh, I, I didn't really think this far ahead because I didn't really think at all that something like this would happen today. Right, yep. Yeah, we've had you around here. We know that's the case. Water's blessing, my friend. Uh, I have no need for such armaments. My weapons, my words are my weapons, and Ixus shall provide, and my faith is my armor. I'm sure that the Mer people will prove to be just as hospitable as I remember. You know, me and me and my spouse, we uh, <laughs> we spent our <laughs> our early days <laughs> with the Mer folk, so I I think this should prove to be no problem. But if you uh, have a bite to eat, I would not mind that. Oh God! This laugh sounded very suspicious. Like, <laughs> like. <laughs> if you have a bite to eat. <laughs> <laughs> no. <but> like, <laughs> our early uh, days of marriage with the Merfolk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what were you doing? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, and Rex Moa just kind of has like a, a dreamy look about him. He's he's definitely recalling some fond memories that no one else can seem to decipher. <laughs> right, mm. right. Understood, understood. Correct, I'm correct. Contemplate how old he works. And I feel like I wouldn't really know how old a lizard folk is just by glancing at them. Uh, yeah. But I will look over the armory and uh, well, they have like miscellaneous tools like rope and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, uh, the armory would be filled mostly of whatever a guard would need. So you would see various, like, weaponry, uh, different types of armors. So, like, in terms of tools, like, what are you looking at specifically? If it's rope, then yeah, they can probably procure some rope for you. Yeah, it'd probably be nice to have some extra rope just in case. Uh, maybe something akin to shackles, if they have something. Mm. Mm. I see you. I see you. Mm. I do have hemp and rope in my backpack. I'm not sure yeah. what what I ten units is. Yeah. I think well that that would be the weight. Most of uh, us should start, I think, with fifty I think it's fifty feet that you get of rope. Yeah, I think it's fifty feet automatically. Mm. I think basically every pack has fifty feet of hemp and rope in it, besides mm. maybe the priest pack. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, I think most of us have, like, have Explorer's Pack and Dungeoneer's Packs. Yeah. I mean, still, hey, the guard would just, like, he would kind of huff at your request and he just gets up, just looks around in one of the, one of the uh, crates and pulls out two sets of shackles with a key for each. And he just takes notes in its ledgers. Right. Any weapons? Any armor? I, I start I start sniffing I start sniffing the air. <laughs> can I can I roll to see if there's any any food back there? <laughs> yeah, okay. Roll me a uh, roll me an investigation. Okay. Investigation. Let's see. Ooh, not not looking good, but it is what right. it is. Okay, okay. Um Rex Moa, your keen sense of smell. Uh, you cannot catch any food in the vicinity. Of course, the all the different smells of the outside markets and everything were, you know, enchanting almost because it was uh, a symphony of colors and smells and tastes and, and all of that. But it is now has been it now has been doled out. Um, at least in this building, you cannot get any sort of. Uh, any sort of, uh, you know, reading of any, well, not reading, I would say, any sort of smell mm -hmm. of any food nearby. Perhaps, you know, maybe maybe there's a guard having a, a little bit of food on the side, but that's what you can pick up. Okay, uh, I want to... I'm just a little sad. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk to Rex Moa as Hipper for a moment. Go ahead, go ahead. Do you don't have to ask for that. You guys can talk in <laughs> character. Mm -hmm. No, I know, just to make it less confusing. Okay. Oi, old man. 
Hmm. You're married? Seriously? Hmm. Yes, happily. Ah, I recall the the day that we exchanged our vows. And I, I pull out my my quarterstaff and look at it uh, rather longingly. I was gifted to this. I was gifted this long ago as a memento of that glorious day. Then, uh, mind me asking, where's your last right now? Oh, <laughs> they're back, uh, from my hometown, uh, Seas Marrow. I was just heading back there, actually. It's been quite the while since I've, I've seen them and our child. This, uh, this dig of mine, it's lasted a little longer than I expected, but they're used to, to waiting, and I just can't wait to see their smile once we reunite. Remind me where Seas Marrow is again. Is that like northern uh, continent, southern continent? Not really good with geography. I've lived here my whole life. Oh, well, you see, my friend, Seas Marrow lies upon the shore right in the cradle of Ixus's bountiful sea. Huh, how, what, what are they teaching you all these days? Don't even uh, know basic geography? I wasn't taught anything. <laughs> I lived on the streets. Oh, my child, there was much to learn. <laughs> Speaking I of... glance back. <laughs> eh, um, don't exactly have any education, formal at least. All of mine is for my master. Hmm. Ah. Do they not teach you of the, the bountiful eastern seas? Hmm. Well, my friends, after this adventure, if you would like to get acquainted with me and mine, you all can gladly join me. I just know that the seas on the left, seas on the right, seas on the, the bottom and the up, there's just seas everywhere. <laughs> We are uni all united by Ixus's waters. That is right. Also, I apologize that the accent changed from British to it's just a, straight dude. up Long Island. I'm, I'm telling <laughs> you, man, I can't do voices at all. So you guys are going to hear my NPCs all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, I guess Kipper's just from Long Island now. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, well. I tried to have a better accent, but it is what it is. Um... I'm gonna give you guys, uh, we'll see if I give you any clues. Kipper and Ambrose, would you guys mind giving me a history check, but with disadvantage this time? Mm. Yes, where is my history? Here is my history. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, it does automatically. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. We'll see, and we'll see if I give you an information or not. 18. Damn, man. okay, okay, okay. Oh, Pretty You're good start, not gonna that. lie. What's my okay. Ooh. I'm a seven. Okay, okay. So, Kipper, uh, you're confused, honestly. Uh, yeah, That's you know, way. you know about the seas, north, south, east, and west. You don't really know what he's talking about. Perhaps you haven't gone out, out of town too much. You haven't explored the world. It's kind of hard to explore off of a floating island in the middle of a lake when you're poor. Yeah, <laughs> precisely, precisely. Not everybody... Uh... They need better public transportation in this, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. Not everybody is also uh, cut for adventure. Who knows? Maybe you enjoyed spending some time with your friends in, in Mistville, and you really I didn't think about friends that. Friends are adventure. Mm -hmm. Now you're... I still have no friends. Correct. Maybe... <laughs> maybe... Maybe you grew resentment of adventuring because of this. Who knows? Um, no. Ambrose, however, I'm going to whisper something to you. <laughs> but you guys continue. The guard is looking at you guys speaking and just kind of tapping the little quill in its ledger. He, You guys can see that he has taken note of the two uh, shackles and keys yeah i'll also take a look over some javelins uh say no i don't think my great suit is gonna be very useful in the water um <laughs> right okay there you go he moves up into like a weapons rack and you see him pull 
three um, javelins for you. He just sets them up it's next to the king. It's all about taking so many resources, but unlike my acquaintance here, as I kind of like gesture towards Suxmoa and Kipper, I don't have any fancy magics to keep me alive. Right, well, don't apologize to me. Um, I'm just, I'm just the ledger guy. <laughs> you, mayor wanted you guys to have this. Uh, who am I to say no? He just starts noting down the javelins in his ledger as well. Now, if I'm correct, Major asked you to check with the alchemist after this. It's probably going to give you some more stuff. I don't really know. Okay, very quickly. Uh, you just hit your 250 followers goal. And oh, shit! The, 250, the 250th uh, follower... His name is Setan Tahuchulain. Oh my goodness, I did not even see that. Sorry, I was uh, very uh, looking at some stuff and sending some messages, secret messages from my people. Hey, that is awesome. Thank you so much. 250. Yeah. Oh, 251. Somebody else just followed. That is, that is oh, my wow. friend, actually. Whoa, That's... let's go. Oh, yeah. Thank nice you, thank you guys. You thank you guys. Yes, thank you guys for following. Thank you guys for being in here, and I hope you guys enjoy the campaign. And hey, for those who don't know me, uh, we're gonna do a little introduction and keep for everybody. I am ZJ. I do a lot of games, game fun. If game make me angry, game fun. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, also do man. a lot more other stuff like you know we played some visual novels we played some horror games and we're now playing D&D as me being the DM of this lovely group sadly one of our one of our people is uh, having very bad technical difficulties so they were not going to be able to be to be in the session today but we're going to get them next week don't you worry about it now everybody please introduce oh, yourselves uh well, oh, yes. uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh god oh god rex i'm playing the the lizard folk rex moa i'm also a dinosaur t-rex uh, png tuber pleasure to meet you yes sir oh me next okay uh hello i'm bip bip i'm a monster botanist i guess i'm a botanist in real life and i'm a uh I play spooky games, indie games, horrible indie games, but they're very fun to me. And I like this cat man, he's pretty good. <laughs> yes. Cat man is pretty nice. Yeah. So, I'm Dasano Ninja. Uh, I'm a streamer like everyone else here. I play a variety of games, much like Villa. Recently, I've been a bit of a hiatus, but I'm going to get back into it starting, well, this month. <laughs> Uh, I am playing Ambrose. I am a Earth Tenacity fighter. So, I hope to keep you guys all around and keep you guys enjoying. Gross, Ambrose is weird. Oh, you're already getting cooked in the chat. <laughs> I'm getting cooked by my own friend. No. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much, people. Thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoy the session. Uh, I'm sad that our friend Quartz couldn't be here because uh, she has an amazing character. But hey, don't worry. She does. D don't worry. There's a lot to be done in this campaign. And I'm pretty sure that there's going to be so many things that she can interact with. All right. So let's continue. The man. Right, so we're. Oh no no go ahead go ahead. Sorry. I was sorry. just gonna say so we're heading to the alchemist. Oh yeah, the man just kind of like waiting for you guys to see if uh, you have any, you know, any other request. Hmm. Oh the the quartermaster. Yeah 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 exactly the guy with the ledger the ledger guy. Um, do I have... I do have dark vision. Um, I'll go ahead and ask people that are with me. Well, the... Water is bound to be rather dark. Can all of you see well in the darkness? Uh, let me check real quick. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can... What you're looking for is dark vision. Yeah, was that going to be under... Where would dark vision be? Yeah. It's on it your be, passive. Like passive, I'll say. Right. Skills, yeah, bottom right. Okay. Is it like the features and traits the yeah. bottom? No! I'm pretty sure you would be the only one 
uh, okay, of this yeah. phone. I, surprisingly enough, do not. Yeah, uh, it's e it's really? you and Torin yeah. would be the only guys with uh, dark vision. Sadly, mm -hmm. Torin is not here. Huh. So no one has dark vision. Okay, so we should probably ask from the alchemist mm. to give us like. A, mm. a, How do we light up water? Uh, well, <laughs> well, I think if we just get potions for our eyeballs to be mm. good. Yeah. Then... So I'll I'll just say as as Rexmoa, it's like oh, I'm no stranger to a dive, but uh, these eyes aren't as good as they used to be. I must admit. You got cataracts. <laughs> yeah, my, my shed just gets in gets in my eyes, really really blocks them up. Oh no. How old how old is uh Rex Moa? It's kind of a rude question to ask. <laughs> the answer to that would be, wouldn't you like to know? Yeah. <laughs> really funny if I'm older than Rex Moa. <laughs> Ambrose, give me your hand. I'm actually trying to find out where where I put their age. Ambrose, give me your hand. It would probably be in the bio section of your character yeah, sheet. Yeah, it's on the bio section of the character I'll, sheet. I'll go ahead and look over at Kipper and Ambrose. Oh, mm. kind of like probably have to bend down slightly. Dishonor. And just kind of. Dishonor. Is my. Am oh, I... Am Ambrose. He, he is. A, he's on? in another wavelength. Ambrose, give me your hand. Hello. Hello. Ambrose. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, I think I was cutting out for a second. Oh, okay. Understood. Ambrose, give me your hand. Yes, I will go ahead and bend down slightly and offer you my hand. Okay. Thank you. Did you just Wait a second. beat him? <laughs> Wait a second. What? <laughs> God. I just hear a crunch. <laughs> my hand. I'm watching the replay of that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. So the man in the ledger is kind of waiting for you guys with your small talk. He goes, all right, well, if you guys don't need anything, please I'm ask you to leave. This is no place for civilians. Mm. And if that's Thank it. Thank you, my friend. Uh, water's blessing upon you. I suppose we will be on our way to the alchemist. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Mm. I'm not going to pay for this, so. Shoo. Uh, he just kind of pushes you away. Um, <laughs> whoever is taking the shackles, uh, there are two shackles Boy, and man, two keys. Uh, and yes, I have them both knocked out. Okay, and Ambrose, you have been given three javelins as well. Yes, I also have those knocked down. Perfect, <laughs> perfect, perfect. Now, I imagine you just have like a quiver, but it's extra big. Yeah, it's just like a like a huge quiver for your javelins. And you'd probably just like strap him in one of your one of your armor straps or something like that or you know just carry yes. them on your freaking arm who knows uh, I, i'm constantly biting up them oh god just constantly <laughs> i'm just okay so i just have chips on me but i find it absolutely hilarious that like each time that i'm crunching on a chip i'm imagining i'm just like stop biting me on don't bite him man mm. That's going to ruin Rapple. your teeth. <laughs> All right. Oh, you ruin your teeth. Yeah. yeah, do they have good dentists in Misspell? <laughs> History check. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm a cleric. I can instantly heal my teeth. Yeah, you, you just like pick up your broken teeth in the ground and cast mend on yourself. Oh, God, that would be awful. I mean, it would be very, con very convenient, but awful. <laughs> I guessed mend on your eyelids and permanently shut oh them. no that's awful <laughs> I guess oh god you guys are gonna be the war crimes hole. group I see okay I see <laughs> I see what I'm getting will. myself into <laughs> I would like to know I'm lawful good <laughs> yeah that's what they all say <laughs> no I'm definitely chaotic neutral oh yes oh yes all right so you guys are being escorted outside of the guard building, now being in the streets of Mistbell. Uh, after the tragedy, the town is all, again, going back to being dark and gloomy, as it was always. You guys are more like how I remember it. <laughs> you guys are gonna head out towards the alchemist. I'm assuming. Yeah, let's do that. 
I don't know the way. <laughs> Kipper, you would totally know the way. You have been in the oh. streets. It is all very familiar to you. You're going to take a left, and then you're going to take a right at... Exactly. The delis, and then you're going to take another left, and then... Uh, and then a little zigzag and then keep straight for three blocks and then you're going to keep a right. Exactly. Precisely. Precisely <laughs> what you guys are going to say. Kipper, the streets of Mistville are familiar to you. Very much so. These, This has been your home forever and you have never really left. So you know all the little nooks and crannies and the shops and the inns and all of the... Some of the, like people's residences you've already like memorized them and stuff i also know where all the vents and drainage uh exactly you also know all of that and yeah. uh you would know about the alchemist they're talking about it is a one of the um one of the it's not the largest alchemy over here and uh but you would know that this alchemist has a lot of tie-ins with the noble families of Mistbell. So you can make up your, you know, from just pure instinct to say, oh yeah, this is the guy. If we're being told that there is an alchemist that is helping us here, this is the guy. So you are able to move um, the party along onto Mistbell until you reach the, the alchemist's place. It is a building with uh, it's a wooden building uh gray kind of bluish gray uh, roof tiles as the rest of the city this one has a lot of windows where light can come in uh usually because it's very dark and gloomy in the town of mistbell some sort of inside lighting is is needed and the alchemy has chosen a lot of uh a lot of windows entering the place you would see the very uh bright colors of many alchemical ingredients potions like and shells skull. like a human skull hey that could be an ingredient <laughs> uh very I mean, human not, skull. giant's toe is an actual ingredient yeah just saying. yeah exactly That's exactly frog let him free exactly exactly and you guys will be able to see the bright ingredients all over the place you know some alive some not so alive um the man that you're seeking once you enter the place it's a a human with somewhat of a dark kind of black kind of graying hair it's obviously on his it's obviously getting there on it on its years and um you guys come in and he goes what's your business here oh uh we were sent here by i would like to say the mayor and the guy from the you know what uh Rex Moa, can you take care of this? I'm not good with people. Oh, uh, so <laughs> Rex Moa, when when they walk in to the the alchemist shop, you can kind of see a shift in their expression. Like uh, they're no longer just uh, like taking in the environment and you know taking in all the the smells and and tastes on the street. They they are focused, and uh, they immediately talk to the the proprietor of this place. Uh, water's blessing upon you, my friend. I, I see you run a apothecary here. It's nice to meet a, uh, a fellow alchemist. Right, right, right. Uh, thank you. Um, are you are you buying? Hmm. Uh, yep. Well, my friend, uh, I don't know if you've heard, but we are on uh, a mission by your mayor. So I was wondering if we could perhaps make use of your facilities. Do you have any spare uh mermaid's liver scales of the sea jellyfish's tongue mermaid's liver scales of what are you uh, you guys are the ones yes okay well i was just informed about this this the magical leather letter appeared sure um okay i was instructed to give you these and he goes into the back uh, into the back room um you can see from where you guys are standing it's a simple building just like a wooden bar on the other side there's like a big table with a lot of ingredients you can see on the end a cauldron with some magical fire below bubbling away a lot of uh 
uh, alchemy. What are the names of these things? Oh, I forgot the names. Oh, well, the little bottles and all of that. I, I forgot the names. Um, vials. Uh, yeah, vials as well. You can uh, you can see it all on the back room. You guys can see it's only covered by a little curtain, and on the on the end you will see a lot more of a storage behind over there. There's a lot of crates with different potions and contraptions. The man just kind of looks through and just gives you and just pulls out a few. And he goes, right. Well, here it is. Uh, potions of water breathing uh, for each one of you. He hands each one of you a potion of water breathing, which I would like you guys to add to your sheet. And uh, as an added bonus, uh, you were also given one of these, courtesy of your of our lovely mayor. He hands you a vial of a red liquid, which all of you would be able to guess it's a healing potion. I like a healing potion. Yep. So all of you guys uh, would get one water breathing potion and one healing potion. Make sure to take notes of that. And he goes, right, well, uh... Are you here if to shop? Most of my customers are already gone. Uh, well, the whole the whole fiasco at the at the plaza was uh, not good for business. No, in no, no. Understandable, understandable. Also, uh, Rex Moa, isn't it a little on the nose to go meet the uh, the fish people? when we use, like, a mermaid's liver for a potion. Ah, uh, my friend, mermaid's li liver is not literally the liver of a mermaid. It's like a... How would you say? Like how the the eye of a worm is not the eye of a worm. It is simply a seed. What the heck is the eye of a worm? Uh... I'm afraid I cannot uh, condense decades of apothecary knowledge upon you, but you will just have to trust me on this one. I assure you, you are in good hands. I'll just have to learn on the fly, I guess. Mm-hmm, and I will gladly impart my knowledge upon you. Uh, this man seems to know a lot about apothecary, maybe uh, some weird weird concoctions I have not heard of, but well, okay. I mean... Uh, I would like to make a roll of, of some kind, so... Mm-hmm. Rex Moa is trying to think right now. Of course, uh, he hopes the mission ends peacefully, but aside from the obvious, like, having to breathe underwater, what other dangers could be posed during our uh, visit to the mermaid's kingdom? Um, give me a history check for that one. Just a normal roll. All right. Ooh. Oof. <laughs> Rex Moa. Doing great. Mermaids are very unpredictable creatures. They can be very peaceful or uh, hostile. Uh, especially when uh, when disturbed. As far as understanding the dangers of underwater exploration, you would know that there's a lot of um not so peaceful um, fauna below, but lakes tend to be quite calm mm -hmm. in comparison to the open ocean. Mm. But that is all I'm going to give you. As someone who likes the, the ocean and the lake biology, I definitely, I can definitely concur. There you go. Oh, oh, okay, so Rex Moa recalls a memory of him and his spouse enjoying a, a cocktail of some kind ah, along yes. with the merfolk, and, and he attempts to recreate it in this apothecary. Oh, boy, okay. He, like, takes a shrimp, puts it in there, and is like, oh, yes, we're done. <laughs> okay, and what are so you, got, like, uh, trying to do specifically? Uh, like your my honeymoon friends, I, I recall this this absolutely divine brew that I shared with my merfolk friends back in the day, and I think it would be rather helpful as a as a peace offering, you know, something to to break the ice, show our intentions, 
And uh, my good sir, if you will allow me to use your facilities in order to bring this memory back to life, I think I could pull it off. Mm, but Apothecary kind of thinks for a second. He goes, right, well, not like I have a lot of customers right now, but you break anything, you pay it. Okay, so uh, what do I what do I do from here? Okay, you want to specifically <laughs> try and make a a cocktail? <laughs> yes, something to you know outside. Okay, outside of the game, this is kind of silly because how do you drink things underwater? But yes. inside the game, yes. <laughs> I was gonna totally make a remark yeah. on that, but I was just gonna let you go through with it. Okay. Yeah. Since uh, you technically don't have proficiency with any alchemy kit, I'm just going to make it a a straight up D20. Okay. Just roll me a D20 and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Come on, you can do it. Alchemy me this, Batman. Uh oh. Ooh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Bring uh, that build I, to you. I, uh, Rex Moa, like they, they're cooking. I, I am, I am locked in, and I, I assume this is going to be like a bad outcome. <laughs> um, Rex Moa, you, you get ready, situated in the alchemy workshop ready to make the elixir that you remember so fondly in your memories. Mm. But there's something weird. All of the ingredients that you are seeing around you, they don't look the same as the ones at home. Mm. So you go with your senses, your smell and your touch because of course uh, you're not allowed to taste everything you have, you have <laughs> you're using. Um, and you managed to create a concoction, yes, but, um, it has a very foul smell. Uh, the liquid in this concoction is a dark green liquid, very cloudy. Mm. Uh, what I would happen... What would I, I happen if one of us <laughs> drank it? I, okay, so I, I take Rex Moa, they, they take a whiff and they, they kind of shudder a bit. It's like, oh, a lot stronger than I remember, but I'm I'm fairly certain this is how uh, the merfolk rearranged it. Would anyone like a try? I'll take a bit. <laughs> oh, oh no. boy. I'll, you got... I'll just, I'll just uh, take okay. a sip. Not so, much. So because... I'll... That. I like pour Let's... a little bit for Kipper and I pour a little bit for myself. Like basically like yeah, like a little like a little shot. All right. Come on, Rock Guy, you no. need to get in on this. Just no a little offense just a little to sip. You too, but I don't think that's safe for consumption. This is how you bond. This is how mm. you this is how you get new bros. Uh, yes, Ambrose, I know the Merfolk have different tastes than perhaps uh you are accustomed to, but this is simply their culture. Oh, this is going to be so bad. So, okay. Um, who is drinking this elixir? <laughs> are we going to have to roll? Oh, yes. Initiative? Uh, no, not initiative, but something. It's going to happen. I'd imagine that me, yeah, me and, and Kipper. Okay. Yeah, we're taking it uh, together. Just trying to, trying to Birds of a, feather, a little, a little shot together. each. I'll just yeah. kind of like not like physically try to stop them but just kind of like put a hand towards them like please don't do that but ambrose is, is gonna have to but, be the one driving the car after this okay but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna physically stop you or anything so mm. kipper and rex moa please roll me a d100 oh, oh. we're about to see what happens to you Okay, Rex Moore with a 75 and Kipper. Don't kill me. Whoops. Oh, that's the uh, wrong way. I that's suppose. fine, that's fine. Oh, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Kipper with a 38. Now let me find a little fun thing. Er, er. Oh. 
Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is not how I expected this session to go. I can attribute the outcome to Hey, well, we'll listen. See what first. <laughs> listen. Yeah, I'm, I'm finding a very fun outcome for you. <laughs> I'm on All the right. toilet for like the rest of the run. Hold on, hold on, hold on, guy. I'm like I said, I'm, I'm trying to get you a, a very cool table for this because I have a few, but I'm trying to find the funnier one. All right. Um, let's see. Perfect. Okay, we'll use this one. Kipper. You. <laughs> Kipper, you feel. Wait, first describe how it tastes. Oh, yes, actually. <laughs> Each one of you is going to have a different taste. Kipper, for you, the taste is very floral. Almost. Um, almost sweet, as if drinking the actual nectar of a flower. Ooh, so it tastes like honeysuckle. Kind of, yes, 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 yes. Um, you can make multiple flavors, Rick Smo. A little bit that? bitter, but eh, you can tell it's probably because of the mixing of some um, things that shouldn't have been mixed. Uh, Keeper, you, your stomach feels good. You feel actually very nice. Um, oh, no. You actually feel very nice. This concoction really didn't hurt you at all. Oh. Um, but you feel some sort of arcane energy brewing inside of you. Oh, wow. And did, I, did, did this slurry just awaken something in me? No, no, no. Don't you worry. However, you do feel uh, something strange coming from below your feet. Uh, oh. Looking down, you can see that the ground that you're standing on has flowers. Oh, okay, so I'm tripping. Uh, no. Actually, oh. all of you guys can see this. The ground below Kipper has flowers. They are growing right. as he's standing in there. I, I come in. What, what is happening? Uh, yeah, <laughs> let me go I'm for yours, buddy. Or let uh. me go for yours, buddy. <laughs> Oh, that is actually quite funny that you <laughs> that you got this effect. Rex Moore, you drink the, the concoction. It feels very cool, as if minty, fresh, kind of icy to in your throat. You down it. Your stomach takes it well. You feel, as I said very refreshed by drinking this of course the same sort of bitter sensation you know overcomes your stomach it's kind of like oh i kind of mix mix a little bit of something that i shouldn't have but hey it doesn't taste that bad uh rixmore suddenly you start feeling a small warmth all over your body and you and um your companions and of course the apothecary See that, uh, Rick Small, you start glowing. Ah, uh, uh, I, yeah, I, I, I down the shot and then I, I let out, uh, almost like a, a sigh of relief. And I say, oh, uh, just like it tasted like on the mantis spine. Ugh. And I, I look down at, at Kipper's feet and see the, the flowers growing and I, I start chuckling a little bit. <laughs> I, uh, and recall a, a far off memory. <laughs> yes, and so, yeah. uh, Rexpo, you in fact are gonna be glowing with bright light on a thirty foot radius, which is very convenient that you landed on this one when you needed something uh, you're to be lit be up. Our lantern in the ocean. Oh my God. Oh, yes. We have a lure. Big lake ocean. I'm just gonna like rub my eyes for a second with one hand, and I'll kind of like glance back over at them. It's like. I wait. I didn't drink any of that. Why am I seeing things? And Kipper, <laughs> it, the little little flowers that are coming below your feet are pretty funny. You know, it's ah oh, whatever. You know, you step a little bit out out of this little patch of flowers, and more flowers start growing where you step. I I like being uh, I'm the uh, yeah. 
Um, so Kipper and Sorry. Rex Moa, you are gonna be keeping your effects until your next rest, whether it's long or short. Oh wow. Uh Kipper, your effect, if it wasn't clear enough, you are going to leave a trail of flowers wherever Does you that walk. Mean that if we go in the lake, there's just gonna be a flowers trail of flowers, correct. Underneath. Yep. I have a dome. You're gonna get water rot. That's not good for flowers. Well, <laughs> the flowers are gonna be changing depending on the environment. Right now you can see that not only flowers, but like fungi and like moss start growing on the ground. So, okay, so probably like water lilies. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Or maybe like algae or stuff like that. You know, that's underwater. Yep. And what if I, um, what if I mm -hmm. pick up Kipper? If you pick up Kipper? You oh, going to pick goodness. up Kipper? <laughs> I'm curious. Uh, okay. This sounds spectacular. You Are pick you up like Kipper and uh, Ambrose, your stony skin starts getting mossy. <laughs> I have, I, I have grown a cape. <laughs> I think it should have little tiny flowers in it. Yeah, little tiny flowers start sprouting from all the crevices of your stunny skin. Uh, Villasaurus, Wait, yes, um, your effect is that you're going to grow glow bright light in a 30 foot radius. Uh, and well, now that we have that <laughs> you, liquid courage yeah. under our belt, I think it's time we be on our way, friends. I, the future. Is looking bright. The this was surprisingly worth it. The, uh, I thought something terrible was gonna happen. Are you guys, you guys, that's <laughs> like, yeah, that's my random of table of events. And the other one was just gonna go mm. into a coma. Uh, hey, that's so my so random do I table. Get to keep this concoction. No, you already drink it. You made basically a, okay. a, a glass, so you kind of mm. shared it with with Kipper and, and, and yourself. Um, <laughs> yes, that is my one of my my many table of random effects that can happen to you guys. Uh, I will say the apothecary is going to look at you guys and go, "What are you doing? No, no, leave! No, you are not going to be using my tools anymore." <laughs> and he's gonna like push you aside and go, "Thank you, thank you, all of you. Uh, I our business has concluded, and unless you're thinking about spending any gold, I will ask you to leave." My shop is not the place for flowers that are not used for alchemy. So, off you go. Oi, I'm on the big man anyway. He's carrying me around. You're not going to have to worry about flowers. Uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> you guys can all be doing this yeah. dangerous alchemy in here. <laughs> as, as we're being like, I think this guy has out played. the door. I say, thank you, my friend. Oh, uh, water's blessing upon you. Allergies. He just, I'll just kind of give him a nod of my head and just say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Good luck with the cleanup. <laughs> Out of spite, I start making the flowers that bloom goldenrod and ragweed. Oh, the worst no. Flowers. I will say it is random what kind of flowers they do, but that would be very funny. Um, <laughs> you guys can see as you X, you X at the place, the man just kind of pulls out the, and just kind of starts pulling the flowers off the, his ground. Keep in mind, this is all like wooden boards. So <laughs> it would be very bad for a house to have roots of flowers growing everywhere. Oh my goodness. Yeah, no, that doesn't sound. Exactly. This is why you were in prison once upon a time. <laughs> no different reasons. So you guys exit well, the place. I feel like this is a rather unique experience for Kip for Kipper. <laughs> <laughs> the unique experience of being in multiple jail cells. Hmm. Oh yes. So you guys exit the the apothecary shop. Back into town once again. Oh, let me move you guys over here. Boop, 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 boop. Back into town once again. You guys are uh looking about you've already got what you needed and um you see coming from the corner of one of the buildings the old man that was giving you guys the tale to all the crowd actually not not specifically you he smiles as he sees you already um ambrose mossy carrying kipper and uh, Rex Moore, you are glowing brightly. <laughs> so I'm going he... to keep on carrying Kipper Rezano because uh, 
personally, I'm just like, I don't really want to cover the entire town in flowers. It could get in places it doesn't, it shouldn't be. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> Flower pubes. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. So the man approaches you and he goes, well, I take it. Your apothecary journey was uh, fun. Hmm. Oh, my friend, how did you know we were coming back from the apothecary? <laughs> oh, well, I have my I have my ways of knowing. So it was also the blinding light approaching <laughs> from the distance. Like that's conspicuous. Thirty feet is is pretty big. Yeah, yeah. like a thirty feet radius too. <laughs> You are, uh, you are glowy, glowy, glowy. <laughs> I'm imagining oh. a meme that's like, give me your money. Yeah, so, so for reference, Rex Moa just thinks we spent a lot of time in the apothecaries, and that is just sun, sun up right now. <laughs> <laughs> your brightness is just the sun. Uh, Rex, you do, you do realize what's going on with your skin right now. Ah, uh, yes, I do feel the, the bountiful rays of the sun. Ah, uh, reminds me of when I was just a, a little lizardling fresh out of my egg. No, I would I'm- lay upon I'm... the rocks and just relax. Hmm. Well, that's, that's adorable, but at the same time, uh, you realize it's not from the sun. Hmm. My friend, what do you mean? Uh, it's coming. Do you, I mean, you know how I drank the thing, and now flowers are coming out of the ground, and it's like all hokey mm -hmm. pokey. Uh, you are a giant lantern right now. Ah, uh, yes. My spouse did always call me a beacon of hope. Thank you, my friend. No, an actual, like, you are radiating actual light, like the particle that comes from the sun is now also coming from you. The man is just watching you guys speak, and he's just kind of smiling, very entertained uh, of your back and forth. He goes, right, right. Um, well, uh, now, as for our previous conversation, did you guys take on the deal that the mayor gave you? Hmm. Yes, uh, we did. A second one as well, to mm -hmm. recover the crest of misspell. Right, 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 right. Rich people in there. And the treasures, am I right? <laughs> yes, it's it was a good simple to enough take job. From the rich people, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I you suspect that, uh, like that. <laughs> this journey will be quite the easy one. Just go down there, talk to these mer folks, sort everything out, and then we'll be back by sundown, I believe. Well, that may be the case. Yes. Um, but um, unfortunately for you guys. The potions you've been given, uh, they're not gonna do. You see, I am a wizard of uh, many years, and I can reveal that the potion that you've been given, yes, they would make you breathe underwater. But what about moving underwater? Uh, we can swim. Hmm. Right, oh, right. Yes. I don't think swimming. I don't think you're gonna beat a merfolk a mer in a swimming competition. I'm going to be real with you, my friend. But, but I have a solution. If you guys would like to accompany me to my humble abode, I'll have you know, my my good friend, that back in my day, my prime, I could make the merfolk sweat like none other. But I will accompany you. And by the way, this is uh, how the wizard looks, guys. Just so you guys have a oh wow, a little I visual was, representation. Not, when you said old man, I was mm -hmm. expecting like I don't know, like uh, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, I, I thought this was just like like an old person you would see like on the street. That was very yeah, clearly a wizard. That is, it, it, it's 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 like a, a it's a wizard man. Wizard. It's it's a wizard through and through, as you guys How have did seen. We him. see this mysterious old man before and not realize, hey, that looks like a wizard. <laughs> well, I mean, you could have you could have taken the hint because obviously he was casting spells to make his stories more vibrant, more alive for the people. So yeah, you can totally I'm not cast. A detective. 
I, I like wizards only exist if they have a hat. Well, Kipper, you are sadly right now you are the only spellcaster of the group. So even if you were not a detective, you could feel the strands of magic coming out of this just, individual. Just literally, as anyone's talking, Kipper's eyes just start pointing in the opposite direction. Yes. In fact. I am so non-magical, I can't even do anything magical. <laughs> exactly, no. exactly. Rex Moa, at least, is protected via chi and whatnot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. I just, I just got a big sword. <laughs> so the man goes, please uh, join me before you go. I, uh, I have uh, some more information that would be useful for you and your group, if you don't mind. All right. Honestly, the last time I was in water, I kind of sunk, so I wouldn't mind something to move around in it. I'll kind of, like, smile. <laughs> okay, wait. If you sink to the bottom of the lake, what we could do, in theory, is mm -hmm. just have two ropes, one tied around me, and then one tied around... Uh, lizard guy. Actually, could you give me a name? I don't think I asked either of your guys' names. Yeah, I don't think we ever actually introduced ourselves formally. <laughs> you have not? Oh, that's a funny thing that's happened. Or rather, it has not happened. Mm. Kipper waits for name. Ah. Uh, well, the name of this one is Rexmoa. Ah. Uh. uh. <laughs> I, I hail from the the sea's marrow, uh, the seventh of my line, and uh, archaeologist. Pleasure to finally make your acquaintance formally, and I'm glad that Ixus's waves could bring us together. Likewise, yeah, it's it's been a while. Uh, would have been nice if it'd been under nicer circumstances, but I don't even know if we would have met each other otherwise. Rex uh, Moa. Real quick, sorry to interrupt you guys talking. Once you mention this name, the Seas Marrow, the wizard turns to look at you, kind of inspecting what you're doing. Nothing too, like, noticeable. He's just kind of looking at you, kind of like, huh, you know? But he allows you to continue speaking. I'll also kind of like give a weird glance each time you uh, mention the sea's marrow and kind of like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Seemingly trying to decipher where you're from. I need, uh, need I remind you, Keeper, Keeper is still on, on Ambrose's yes. arms. <laughs> yes. I, as yeah, I know, I am kind of. I'm just, I'm just looking at you. Like when someone people. speaks to. Why I'll kind of like dilated. move my body so you can like actually face them. <laughs> and Ambrose, you now have a very nice uh, moss beard, by the way. <laughs> you can you can shave it off, but you don't have to. I am normally without a beard, so it is kind of strange. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, what's your name, big guy? You've been awfully quiet. I'll kind of like try to look up at you. As I imagine, probably like lean slightly forward to glance down. <laughs> I, I just like put my head mildly over your head where just our eyes are meeting up way too close. I am Ambrose. I do not have a last name. I, I don't think I have a last name either. Now I think about it. I am. Let's see. I am from the port town. A bit, I think it's east of here, right? E yes. East is Port Strail. Yep, yep, yep. I'm from the Port Strail, uh, Port Strail, east of here. Hmm. Oh goodness, hmm. I haven't really heard great things about Port Strail. Hmm. I'm not familiar with it either, but it's always good to hear about these new settlements popping up everywhere. If you thought that the demonstration that we saw today with the the mer lady trapped it it can get a bit more strong in Port's trail that general sentiment 
Even someone like me, who is not all too different from a human, tends to suffer from them. Probably the people we saw today were from Port Strail, so... Ambrose, once you mention the fact that uh, you are not totally human, the wizard looks at you again, eyebrow raised and kind of inspecting you as well. This time he does intervene and he goes, Oh, are you, are you an, an elemental of sorts? Is this man colorblind? To be fair, if you're not looking very closely, I do kind of just look like a, like a dark skin tone man. Yes. Oh, okay. it's, it's, but I do have kind of these I, I thought you were just vein. straight up like shale gray. Well, if, if you were to inspect them closer, you can you can see like, okay, this is not a real like, you know, th this is this is yeah, not I, a normal have, skin tone. <laughs> yeah, the skin tone is a bit darker than a human should be, and I do have slightly glowing veins that are like literally golden. Mm -hmm. But right now they're kind of dull, so it's kind of hard to actually see them. And the man, you guys see the wizard, just kind of nodding about you know scratching his beard kind of looking thoughtful and he goes yes 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 this would do all right no time to waste then come on follow me and he just starts walking into a, a direction away from you guys i'll just kind of give a weird look kind of glancing towards rex and up at kipper that was rather strange wasn't it kind of whispering a general, general rule of thumb, uh, don't follow old giggly men into alleyways. Hmm, I mean, what's the most that a human could do? Uh, did I you, will frown when you, you say not, that. <laughs> were you not experiencing what we were experiencing this morning? <laughs> or afternoon. A I little... know this was a traumatic experience. I can't remember what time of day it was. Uh, a, a, a few seconds have passed as you guys are talking, and you can see the wizard popping his head from a corner, and he goes, "What are you guys doing? Come on! Uh, do not <laughs> I worry. will not hurt you. You are safe." Kind of like putting my hand towards him. Do not worry. We'll be right over. Aww. And I will. Start slowly walking towards him, kind of like making sure Grex Mo is following me. Now I'm on top of <laughs> I feel like it should be easy enough to track where I am. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, just, I just want to make sure you're actually following. <laughs> yes. And um, I will say, uh, Kipper, as you guys are walking, following this wizard onto the streets of Mistbell. The route that he takes would take you to some of the slums of the town, a place where you're very familiar with, uh, having mm. grown in these parts. Um, he My takes- romping grounds. Exactly. He takes some turns and, you know, enters some alleyways that you know, uh, and suddenly he goes into a house that uh, you haven't really noticed very well um and i will ask like you to give me out of place. no i will ask you to give me a perception check please okay well, let's see what these uh these lizard eyes can well on. only kipper because he knows the town you oh, guys are uh, yeah just normal roll please I hate to tell you, Rex Mall, but you've been kind of struggling on the mental levels. <laughs> yeah, Counting eight, know. is that bad? Kipper, um... Oh, you don't really recall about this house. You have a certainty that this house was mentioned at some point in your, of course, your escapades, your, uh... Your street knowledge, you know, uh, this house has been mentioned, but uh, you can't really pinpoint what was mentioned about this house uh the man just simply enters the house as if it was his own you know opening the door and just kind of waving you guys in i will follow in and i'll kind of like make sure to like bend down so i don't accidentally hit kipper's head on the <laughs> you just, you just <laughs> the enter, enter the door and just hear bam <laughs> that would be hilarious <laughs> sudden 
and rest. And, and here's the thing, I probably already have to kind of like bend slightly because I am six foot eight. Yes. <laughs> so Correct, correct. Yeah. I'm, I'm no, I'll just, I'll just climb lower. I'll be like a backpack. Okay. <laughs> so all of you guys enter the place, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. The wizard closes the door behind you and uh, you guys can see a very simple a house uh, keeper you are that's pretty much feels like home to you very little decoration uh only the bare necessities of the house bears yes <laughs> a you know some messed up chairs a, a table that is barely holding together a simple kitchen with like i said only the the main needs for sustenance mm. Um, however, in this house, there's a little bit more. You can see a couple of uh, dried herbs and uh, some spices and uh, some sort of more uh, not as fancy equipment for alchemy inside of here. Uh, but also, you know, we probably can deduct that it is the wizard that has been living here. Um, he goes very in. frugal in here. I like it. Well, thank you, thank you. I cannot give myself the luxury as of uh, the upper class, if you will. Um, please take a seat. I will be done with your, with your potions. Uh, in in a matter of seconds. Don't you worry about me. And the wizard just walks over to like the little kitchen area, and you can see him like light up a a a fire with just a just a snap of his fingers, and you know start working on some spices, you know using like a pestle and mortar, grinding them. I'll kind of like carefully sit Kepo down on one of the chairs and then somewhat gracefully sit down on one myself, making sure I don't like sit down too fast <laughs> and my like very heavy weight can, just Can we have apart. Ambrose roll to sit in a, one of these chairs? <laughs> one of these creaky chairs. Please. I mean, if you guys want to, uh, give me, I'll, I'll give me just roll. a random, the normal D20. D20, okay. That's a math corner. Okay. Oh, okay. Ambrose, well, you are pretty good in your chair. chair. Yeah, you sit down. <laughs> you you it feels comfortable. Well, it's just a really comfortable chair. <laughs> yeah, the chair feels fine. You kind of wiggle around a little bit. You can hear it's creaking, but it doesn't, you know, mm. completely get mm. destroyed by your weight. I, uh, yeah, I'm going to roll. Carefully. I'm going to roll. Wait, Kipper, are you sitting on another chair? I'm sitting on a different chair. Kipper, you don't have to roll. Kipper, you don't have to roll. Your I chair be... is immediately engulfed in plants. It is now sturdy <laughs> because it has a lot of vegetation <laughs> on it. Ooh. Uh, I I want to observe what kind of uh, apothecary herbalist activities our, our mysterious wizard friend is doing as a fellow uh, creature uh, of of the alchemical arts. I, I'm I'm keen to see what they're up to. Give me a perception check. Okay. Uh, perception. Normal. Okay, you love... Uh, we, we love number eights in here. <laughs> we do. Uh, Rexmore, nothing stands out, really. It's just a normal alchemy procedure of uh, mixing out herbs and... Uh, other sort of uh, ingredients to make a potion. All right, so I'll I'll, I'll just uh, yeah, Rex Moa will will say, oh, fine fine technique on that mortal and mortar and pestle, my friend. What is it that you're uh, preparing for us? Thank you, thank you. Well, it's a uh, it's an elixir that would help you in uh, the dire situations of the bottom of the lake. Ah, uh, well. Uh, you probably are wondering why I'm helping you, why I'm, uh, me as a wizard, I am deciding to just help uh, random strangers in this uh, very dark and gloomy day. Mm. We are all children of the sea, my friend. You need not explain your actions. <laughs> right, right. Well, I am still going to... Because uh, your companion, your companions would probably not think the same as you. I am here asking you for something in return for my help. 
Uh, could you maybe specify what you would need our help for, like uh, the specific, uh, specific help? Right. Like yes. Specific. I was going into that. I'm I'm old. I'm my I'm just short of breath. You see, I need you to recover the trinket that the mayor lost. For me, of course. The the stone in and embedded in this lovely lovely metallic surface is uh something that I desire. Oh this man evil, but I like it. He has a secret purpose. Hmm. Are you saying that as Bip-Bip, or are you saying that as Kipper? As Bip-Bip, as <laughs> Bip-Bip. Really I'm just sitting, Kipper's speaking out loud, and the old man's like, huh? No. <laughs> you evil. Evil. So he goes, would, so, you, uh, would you be able to procure that for me? That depends. Why exactly do you want the stone? Oh, uh, just uh, theories of... Uh, Wizards, uh, enchantments, and such. I, uh, I really wanted for its properties. You see, um, and uh, he pulls out a necklace that he has. You can see it's a little necklace with a very tiny gemstone tied to it. Uh, the gemstone kipper is the same stone that the um, trinket, we'll call it, has. You have seen the stone. Oh. Well, if you if you already have one, why would you need a second? As uh, well, you see, I am a I am a collector, and I can probably use this stone for uh, some alchemy and some magic. Of course, I am I'm I'm no I have no ill will against anybody. In fact, uh, I really would not ask anybody this, but I know through my own means, that uh, you four are the chosen. So, I require your assistance, of course. And here, and you see how the man, as he's been talking, he's continuing his contraption and slowly pours it down uh, four vials. Of course, we're saying four because, you know, you guys are supposed mm. to be four. <laughs> yeah. Torin's just been awfully quiet. Today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Torin is just, uh... She's taking a cat nap. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Torin also drank a little bit of that drink, but it just... She's invisible. Yeah. <laughs> she... <laughs> She's invisible. <laughs> okay. Good mention. She's just both invisible and unhearable. Yes, exactly. He's in the ethereal plane of existence right now. Exactly, exactly. So he hands you each a vial you can see it's a vial of a thick kind of almost paste it is still kind of liquid you can you know you can wiggle it around but it's uh thick very thick it's a very dark green again substance yes uh this time however if you would uh you know take a whiff out of it it smells kind of like fishy kind of seaweed kind of fish Smells. I'm okay with seaweed. Does it have fish in it? Mmm, you don't know this. Uh, um, Imagine the man. Just like over I, there I like... can sense the chunks, and I'm very textural, rabbit man. <laughs> yes. Imagine, like, while we were doing this, and he was just, like, slowly using a mortal and pestle and grinding down an entire fish into this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could have been, but yes, uh, it is chunky. Kipper. <laughs> and he uh, goes, do I look, have to drink it? Have this as a as a proof of my of my partnership with you. This potion, combined with your water breathing potion, will stabilize you in the bottom of the lake, so you would have normal movement while under the pressure of the water. Otherwise, as I said, uh, you would not stand too much of a chance against uh creatures native to the waters uh thanks of course if you if Uh, you would like to not drink it i would uh i would give you my best of luck and uh 
Uh, hopefully your corpses get retrieved soon. But... I, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't mm. not accept I... a gift given. A gift so... given is a gift taken. So Rex Moa kind of has a, a scowl on their face ever since the this mysterious wizard uh, offered their counter proposal, and they they hold the this potion in their hands, and they they observe it. They like they swing it back and forth, and 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 then he he looks towards the wizard and opens his mouth. Uh, I I know of your kind. I've seen him many times during my digs. People who just want to pillage the the artifacts and culture of what is rightfully what is not rightfully theirs. Tell me, wizard, what do you plan on doing with this stone? Selling it? Using it for some potion? Some spell? I do not believe it belongs to you. So, what reason should we have to trust you now that we know your intentions? Well, of course. Um I cannot really explain my reasons. You see, these are a secret, and I would like to keep it as that. However, I guarantee you there is no ill will in my actions. That's just it. his word. Yes, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to trust me. And in fact, the potion that you have in front of you, take it as a gift. Whether you can recover the stone or not, you're free to have it. Then would you at least tell us who exactly you are? I don't believe we ever got your name. Oh, correct, sorry. My manners are, <laughs> you must understand, the days of studying and living amongst the tomes and the scrolls are, give you a very poor social skills, yes. Uh, my name is Theodric. For yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, could you repeat that? Yes, my name is Theodric. Theodric. Hmm. I am a, I am a wizard, of course. A, a very, a very adept one at many types of uh, wizardry. If you so need yeah, somebody to, uh... if you need somebody to uh, give a. A good uh, storytelling. Of course, I am your man as well. Uh, you guys probably would see my act in the in the plaza. I whispered to Ambrose, "Well, isn't he a uh, very humble?" Perhaps we'll just have to see. I will not promise you, speaking now to Theodric, that we'll grab you, we'll grab the stone for you. I'm fighting we'll, between... Oh, sorry. We'll just have to see what happens. We don't even know if we'll be able to recover the crust at all. Well, I'll take it as I mentioned it. And you guys see how he stops in his words immediately and a knocking from the door behind all of you guys. He stops before the knocking? Yeah, before the knocking. A couple seconds before the knocking. Hmm. Who would want to come into Old Man Wizard's house? Uh, oh, you guys? And... Uh-huh, uh, no, go ahead, go ahead. I'll, I'll go ahead and stand and go towards the door, assuming that he's not going to try and stop me or anything. Uh, you guys turn around at the knocking, and Ambrose, you stand up and go at the door. Um... Everybody give me a little... Actually, no, I'm going to check your passive perceptions real quick. I think I have a... I have a 12. I also yep, have a 12. Yep. I'm pretty sure yeah, Kipper has, has a little has bit a more. Wow. Uh, on intelligence, yeah, I have Yeah, 15. yeah, okay. Um, Ambrose and Rex Moore, you turn around to see who is going at the door. Kipper, you turn and slowly, like, back your head again. The wizard's gone. Oh. You are now alone in this house. But Kipper, you notice it first. Once you open the door, you see it is uh, the captain of the guard again. Uh, followed by a uh, small group of soldiers that are behind him. And I just give kind of a weird look at them as I kind of glance between them like, 
What's going on? <laughs> he goes, What are you doing here? You're meant to be out and about. Uh, we were just talking to a wizard. Uh, he was right around that general. Uh, you know what? We're we're going. Um, Kipper. Yeah, no um, because of uh, actually everybody that turns around now, you would be able to see that the house looks abandoned now. Um, the only thing that remains of said wizard is the potions in your hands. He took his stuff with him. I hate wizards. Um, a captain. Sorry, I never caught your name. I'm sorry, we weren't trying to cause trouble. We were having a conversation with a man named Theodric. Theodric? Never heard of this man? By the way... Couldn't tell you. Just met him today myself. I believe that's the case for all of us. I kind of like glance towards behind me to see if they agree with his first time meeting them. Correct. We have not met as well. Uh, I should probably introduce myself. I am Captain Bravos of the Royal Guard of Mistbell. I have been tasked in keeping you guys in track. Because it seems that uh, after your alchemy visit, you decided to go into the slums, it seems. He looks at Kipper. I hope this is not no. an attempt of double-crossing us. No, it was not Boy. intentional, I assure you. Hmm. Hmm. I have it's a okay. little more does, trust in me. Does the captain comment on the fact that I'm glowing? Does that, does, does that phase them? He definitely notices, but he is not mentioning anything about it. He, he, once he opened the door, he, he got like, like, what the fuck is going on here? Uh, but he is not mentioning anything about this. Like, literally the fact that there's a glowing lizard man. There is a glowing lizard room, man, and, and he's you're... still, like, beefing with me. Uh, Ambrose is covered in moss, and your chair, Kipper, is now fully, gr uh, like, overgrown. He doesn't Honestly, say anything. probably comfy now. I'm like, get out of my face or I'm mm. gonna make <laughs> And not to mention the talk of a wizard that does not seem to be there anymore. Yeah. Hmm. Nah, to put it shortly, the wizard was... We were going to purchase a couple extra potions to... Ensure our trip into the water was safer. Right. We incidentally caused a bit of trouble for the alchemist, so we didn't want to bother him anymore. I wanna, I wanna do something. Mm hmm What do you wanna uh, do? I wanna put my foot on the guard. <laughs> well, you would be sitting on it. You? Oh, are you gonna walk up to him? Yeah. You, well, you walk up to him, obviously, a little trail of uh, vegetation, flowers, and fungi, and all of that, following oh, you know behind what? you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my foot on his foot and just look him dead in the eyes, and I'm like, he looks down at you. Trust, a little more trust for the person who's about to save the town now, don't you think? He looks down at your foot and then up at him. Uh, bip bip. And it <laughs> flowers and plants just start growing. All Sadly, over uh, bip bip. Uh, his armored foot does not seem to be getting any sort of um, vegetation on it. Um, bip bip. Your power only works on uh, natural surfaces. Dang, Nabbit. So I'm just like intimately putting my foot on his foot. Yes, you're just creasing his Jordans, if you will. <laughs> oh, okay, well at least I'm just. To be fair, her. stepping on someone's foot is still seen as not the greatest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> he. I mean, he's been he's been like, call, like, a butt to me this whole time. Is would Kipper be familiar at all? They're the captain of the Royal Guard, right? Yes. Uh, we've, we've like, in the last episode, we were beefing pretty hard. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. They um, know each other because Kipper is quite the, 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 the miscreant. Yeah. Mm. He's, like, the one person that gets my Jimmy's, uh... Russell. Uh, yeah. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. All right, so 
so Rex Moa kind of like snaps back into reality and and realizes kind of the nature of what's going on and they, they do pocket the potion and uh, they approach Kipper and the captain of the guard and he he puts his hands on both their shoulders it was like ah my friends my friends there was no need to argue our objective is clear I do apologize we seem to have spent a lot of time in the apothecary I do apologize it is sunrise by now but we can be on our way you know, the merfolk, they're known for not uh, accord according themselves to our conventional scheduling. The captain just kind of moves his face away because you're very bright. <laughs> and he goes, Am I... <laughs> yeah, no, go ahead. Is my foot still on his foot? Uh, that's what I was about to, to address. He moves his, his he moves his foot away from yours and he goes, right. Whatever you say. Well, you guys better get going. I don't want to know about whatever herbs and spices you've been ingesting in the apothecary. I need you to move. We don't have much time. And if this is not solved, it will be your heads on top of everybody in this town. Hmm. Don't worry, one domino falls, the other one falls with it. If we fail, there won't be much of a town left. The guard Not gives you the guard gives you a very, very annoyed glance. I frown at the captain and just say, Don't worry. What we we're doing here was to ensure our survival. After all, if we die down there, Everyone's gone. Right. Well, whatever you do in this house is none of my business. I will uh, retreat my men, but we'll keep an eye on you. So I suggest you keep on track. You hear me? Oh, unless you're planning on coming down in the water with us, you have a hard time doing that. <laughs> just kind of, he's kind of grumbles and just orders his men to leave. And then you see the little, little platoon of soldiers leave with him. You know, some of them would move out to their other posts and he would just keep going with their, with its own platoon. Now again, the silence of the house just kind of settles in. I kind of glance down at Kipper. I suppose I've also leaned down slightly at the beginning, just kind of like squatting. You two seem to have a history of sorts. Are you okay? I will be after today, I think. Well, wasn't that a wonderful reunion you hear from behind you? <laughs> All the furniture's back. I'm sitting in the chair again. No, I'll, like, um, immediately stand up and flip around. You like, see, grab to grab my sword. You see the wizard again standing behind you. Hmm. Is that like an invisibility spell or did you like teleport somewhere how did that one work ah, that is one of my many tricks my friend well um you guys see why the guards are a little bit uh furious and uh well uh, as much as i don't want uh this town to be massacred uh i would actually have to ask you please um go along we need this to be solved. As I mentioned, it's fine. Our deal can be arranged if you cannot give me the stone. It's so good. Just take the potion as a gift of goodwill. I'm no. feeling pretty bad. I feel like we bullied this old man to like not have this to like be okay with not getting the stone. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> he's not that bad. <clears throat> he's not Just evil. Just hold on one moment. Mm hmm Why exactly did you disappear when the guards came? Well, I'm a wizard. I have many tricks. I don't have but... the time to show all of them. Perhaps later, once the deed is done, I will I will show you how I do it. Uh, but until then, please, time is ticking. I was asking why. 
It seems rather suspicious that you disappear as soon as they arrive. Ambrose, I have a feeling he's not going to give us a straight mm. answer to anything. He, he's just, mm. He just speaks in riddles and limericks. And you it would be might... correct. <laughs> yeah, I I start walking towards the door and uh, I, I say almost to myself, uh, the wicked flee when no one pursues. And I make my way out of the house. I sigh and nod to the wizard. Well, we'll see how things go. You may find Good me days. here again, or perhaps I will find you. It's all good. Ah, uh, you will know where to find me, in fact. I like whisper to the wizard, like, I'll try to steal that jewel. I love to kick it to these. Ugh. He just kind of pats your head and goes, good boy. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yippee, yippee. That's just Fortnite. I'm just Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. So you guys head out of the building. The door closes. I'll and go ahead and pick Nipper up again, as long as it's okay with it. Are you willing to be picked up again, Kipper? Of course. I like put my arms up. I'm like, a piece. <laughs> <laughs> a piece. <laughs> yeah. So oh, piece. you guys, you guys, uh, Kipper, you would start leading the people to the southern part of town. You would know uh, that the town has a an entrance, of course, uh, which is a large land bridge connected to land. It's where most of the people that go on, on foot come from. Of course, some people can rent uh, boats to get inside. Maybe if they're carrying some more merchandise or stuff like that. Uh, all of you guys would know that there is a, a town outside. A smaller, uh, we'll call it like a hamlet, outside of Mistbell. It is still under the jurisdiction of Mistbell. But it is where uh, some of the farms for the town reside it is uh very much a, a a small place probably like one two inns few houses mostly filled with you know farmers maybe like couple shops as well uh you guys head out slowly the guards just kind of glancing as you guys move clearly watching your movements and stuff until you with some time manage to get yourselves to the outer part of of Mistbell. The town itself is very peaceful as if, you know, the very very awful thing that just happened in the inside of the lake had not affected them. Of course, some people knew about it and the rumor was not rumor, sorry. The the words were spreading fast. But this side of town is mostly unaffected by the inside. Of course, they all follow under the same name, under the same houses. But this town is almost as if it was its own thing. Um, Bip Bip, I want you to give me a nature check, please. Because you are nature the... Check? Yes, because you know a little bit more about uh, Mistbell than these other two folks. Okay, do you want normal roll or advantage? Normal roll, please. Very oh, nice. Wow. Okay. Heck. So, Bip Bip, um, from all of your time uh, around town, maybe you've been to this outer area of town, uh, you know that the easier way for um, you to get in the lake would be rounding, uh, going around town and going into the southwestern part of it the lake is huge but maybe like an hour uh maybe a little bit less 30 minutes to an hour you would be able to get to a a calmer area where there's not a lot of buildings so you can enter easily uh maybe not bump into any fishermen or uh any boats or any of the sorts you know somewhere where you guys would be able to go down into the lake without any disturbances from the people inside. Mm. So you managed to take uh, your group there and you are now staring at, you know, the edge of the lake. 
the town of Mistbell in the middle of this huge body of water. It almost looks like an ocean if it wasn't for the big mountains that loom in the horizon behind it and the big forests that you can also barely see from the flatlands that are the the westerlands. Also, since I have nature check, uh <laughs> I'm identifying the fish as we're, like, boating across. What? Are we in the boat yet? No, no, no. You guys are not in a boat. You guys are walking outside. Oh, we're walking? Oh, uh, unless you want to take a boat, totally. Wait, are we walking on the water? No, no, no. Outside of the, the edge of the lake. Oh, okay. Oh, so we got out of Miss Bell already. Yes, you went we out of this like little town years. and just... Uh, you, Kipper, you managed to guide them to the outskirts of this little hamlet outside of Mistbell, which is also considered part of Mistbell. Uh, you guys don't want to take a boat uh, because obviously the gravity still affects, even though you're underwater. Who knows what the potion of the old man may do? Mm. And um, you are deciding to take uh, another route going from, you know, from your own slowly tr uh, going down into the lake. Well, if we're... I guess... Uh, let's see. For a few different options we have of going down into the lake, we could... Number one, and I'll take a show of hands for this. I know one hand's invisible, so we kind of can't get her hand on this. I apologize. You're just gonna have to experience this with us. Uh... <laughs> So, either we take a boat into the middle of the lake, we take the potion, and then we jump off, and then we sink to the bottom. Or, we just walk in from the edge of the water, slowly, incrementally making our way into the area that we would naturally, and then past that, I don't have any other ideas. Mm hmm Hmm. Uh... So we're, like, on the edge of the water, right? Uh, yeah, no, like I said, uh, you guys are on the edge of the water. You can totally, like, go back into this little hamlet or just take uh, okay. any of Kipper's so are, options. are we on, like, a dock or are we on, like, a beach or a shore of some kind? You're on the shore of the lake, yes. Okay, so, uh, I, I look to Kipper and Ambrose and I say, one moment, my friends. I must commune with Ixus, and I I start taking a step, step after step until I'm about like uh, ankle deep into okay. the water. And Rex Moa, they they get on their they crouch down, get on their knees, and their head is is looking towards uh, the water of the lake, and they mm -hmm. cup their hands raise the water over their head, and they recite a prayer to Ixus. Okay. Like, what kind of prayer is this? Hmm. Ah, all right. <laughs> let me, let me think for a quick second. Uh, hmm. Ah, kind Ixus, mother to us all. Ah, matron of the waters. I'm asking for your assistance in our time of need. Blessed are your waters, and blessed are the currents that bring us together. And then he drops the water over his head. All right, let me do a little, little, little secret roll over here. Okay, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. All right, you finish your prayer. Water is nice and cold. <laughs> <laughs> That's all very I gleam from it. <laughs> it is very wet, in fact. It's shiny because he's in it. <laughs> yes, you. Once you step into the water, you can see like your body illuminates like the surrounding like water. Hmm. I, I like keep, to imagine that, it, that that this is a thing. <laughs> that he's like attracting all of the minnows, mm. like all the minnows. <laughs> yeah, you And may then I'm be. imagining there's this little. Okay, so. There's this little type of fish, uh, I forget 
what it's called, but it basically looks like a little glass eel, and it's farmed mm -hmm. in certain rivers and lakes in China. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. how they eat it is they just fry it up, and it's like it's crispy fish fish chips. And I imagine well, I that would I'm, be. I'm familiar with that fish. Yeah. Well. Hmm. Interesting. I feel like that would be a fun fish to have in this lake. Mm -hmm. But they're <laughs> they're minnow sized. Mm. So. So yeah, Rex Moa is is just deep in concentration. Uh, hands over the air. <laughs> Clothes absolutely just like getting soaked with water, and they they are just like in this meditative state. Boy, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt anything right now, but uh, before we go down there, I have a feeling this is something that you'll probably need. Could you hand me the two halves of your quarterstaff? Hmm. Yeah, Rex Moa's hands slowly come down, and from their crouched position, they, they reach underneath their robe, head still facing towards the water, and present the two halves by lifting it above his head. So, completely silent. Okay. Let's see. I will cast Mending. Okay. Easy enough. You can see the fibers of the wood start to twist and bend finding each other and slowly reforming the staff if you as you take the time to make sure the quarter staff is well um rebuilt and uh rex Moy, you have your quarter staff back <laughs> Man, i really should have learned magic at some point yeah and then yeah so i i i lowered the staff towards like eye level Rex Moa opens up their eyes and gazes upon it for a while and uh you can't tell if if it's the water dripping down or perhaps a tear being shed but the water continues to fall over their their lizardy skull and they stand and Rex Moa looks towards Kipper uh staff in hand, one hand, and he places his hand on Kipper's shoulder and says, ah, thank you, my friend. Ah, my, I guess my prayers have been answered by Ixus. You have no idea how much this means to me. Even though I will say, you know what? Here you go. And I, I, I take my the, the other quarter staff I was carrying, which I like planted into the sand, and I say, it seems like only a fair exchange, would you not say? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take it. I need, I saw it. Your staff looked like it meant a lot to you, and you shouldn't have to cry any tears over <laughs> milk or something. I, I, I don't know things. Don't look at me. <laughs> Yeah, Re Rex Moa giggles a bit and just uh, smiles a, a toothy smile. <laughs> All right, so I will get rid of Kipper's quarterstaff from my inventory, and I will return your quarterstaff to yours. Yeah. And Kipper, yeah. make sure to add your quarterstaff back. I don't know if I ever took it off. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> then you can just yeah. leave it there. <laughs> All right, so what's it going to be? group of oh, adventurers so uh, i do have a question so yes. does does the mending spell is there any difference like uh, appearance wise between uh how it originally looked and how it looks now yeah actually let me check if there is i'm pretty sure there is not but just in case skipper i'm gonna as move long in. as you as long as the breaker tear is no longer one foot in any dimension you mend it leaving no trace of formal damage correct mm -hmm. there you go you have your staff just as you remembered. And mm -hmm. I'm really hoping your quarter staff was not thicker than a foot because holy no, crap, I don't think like that's the case. Is a nine. Uh, I, well, I'm just carrying around like a, a log with me. a telephone <laughs> wall. This man only king. Ambrose can wield that thing. <laughs> yes. 
Mm. So, so I'll kind of glance the water. It's like, hmm, I have not swam in quite some time. Mm. I think we should probably just head straight into it. The boat would cost us money, and I'd like to at least rely on this potion we have here. I kind of like take out the swimming one specifically that we got from mm. Theodric. Yeah, and uh, Rex Moa is now like he's he's stretching using the quarter staff to help uh, uh, flex, and uh, he says, "Yes, my friend, I agree. Unfortunately, it seems like Ixus is trusting us with this mission on her own. She does not always provide her wisdom, but my faith." is still unbroken, and her faith in us. Who knows? Maybe it'll mean the merfolk are more amenable to us. My good, so are you deciding to just walk from the shore into the lake? Yep, I will go ahead and pop po both potions. Okay. The one we got from the wizard and the one we got from the alchemist. Indeed, indeed. All of you guys are popping both potions? I hmm. will definitely pop po potions, okay. but I will do so with a grimace. Yes, mm. it is. Uh, the wizard potion is very chunky and definitely has a very bad taste. It is not uh, like the one that you drank. In fact, that one was mm. pretty nice to you. Mm. But yeah, that this one, one was is, pretty nice. This one tastes pretty bad. It kind of tastes so. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Rex Moa. Uh, I, he will drink the the potion of water breathing, but he will not drink the wizard's potion. And, okay. Uh, instead, he he's going to use a, a little trick that he learned, and he starts picking up rocks from the shore and uh, <laughs> okay. putting them in his bag. All right. Okay. Okay. That's Perfect. That's make you heavy. Listen, hey, you are you can be weighed down like that. So you guys are gonna be starting. Um, oh, remember remember to take down the potions that you have already used. By the way. Yes. Mm. Um, and so you guys are gonna. Breathing. You guys are gonna start um, walking down into the water. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh yes. Sorry. So Kipper and Ambrose, as you guys get to probably like chest deep, and you start continuing going down and down, you can feel that the water pressure and the gravity inside of the water is as normal as it was just walking normally in, you know, land. Ambrose, okay. you are a stone guy and obviously you don't float, but you can see that the very slow movements that you would have gotten from being below the water are all gone. You feel like you can move normally now. Uh, give it kind of voidly I do this, but I'm going to try and speak under the water. Like putting my head under and trying to try and speak. What are you gonna say? Uh, I'll I'll just say like, uh, can you hear me? You can totally hear him. Okay, I can. Cool. Mm -hmm. I can hear you. Uh, Rex Moa, can you speak? Rex Moa, uh, as I was about to say, sorry. <laughs> uh, you are able to keep yourself down in the ground level. However. The water pressure, you can feel it. Your movements are slower and uh, you cannot speak underwater. And um, while you are in this state, you will have disadvantage in everything dexterity. Ooh, ooh. Mm. I guess this is the real challenge. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, I'm going so, to. Oh, um, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go oh, ahead. I, I, I was just going to say, uh, Rex Moa nods his head. So I can hear them, right? But you I can hear can. them. You can see them mm. moving properly and everything. Obviously, your lizard eyes would allow you to kind of see underwater. Plus, you know, you're glowing, so you can see. Mm. <laughs> That's I want right. to hear him uh. try to talk, uh. though. <laughs> yes, if you would try to talk, you would yes. get a, a mouthful of water. Yeah, I, I just not breathe underwater. <laughs> he can breathe underwater, but that doesn't mean that, you know, you it's can speak on the water. Cool. Exactly. I'm going to be gargling, by the way, for a little bit. <laughs> That's fine. Because <laughs> that potion was nasty. That is all good. <laughs> so, and this lake water is pretty, pretty clean. 
I'll just go ahead and kind of like put a hand up towards the other two to make sure they like don't get next to me. I'm going to pull out my greatsword and I'm gonna do a couple of like test swipes in the water to see if I can actually swing it correctly. You pull out your greatsword and the weight of the sword feels normal as if you were pulling it out in land. Swing it around like you always do. The sword responds very well. Satisfied, I will sling it back around and tie the sling back to my back because I'm not really using a sheath because it's a great sword that mm -hmm. doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But I basically have kind of like a bandolier type strap that wraps around my back. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, uh, and you guys are going to start moving into the lake, correct? Yes. Who really. is leading the party at this point? I want a, an order of uh, a marching order. I uh, am happy to lead. Yeah, I you feel are, like unless I can definitely be last just due to like the, the physical exertion that they're experiencing. Okay. I will be first then, Kipper will be in middle, and, and then and just, like, Rex Mo will be it. last. Mm. Okay, so that's gonna be it. So then, Ambrose, I want you to give me a survival check, please. Yes, okay. Normal goal. That is an eight. We are loving the eights. Okay, you guys love the eights today, it seems. Ambrose, you are guided by... Uh, the glow of Rexamoa and uh, your own eyes while trying to see the... while trying to see in the depths as you keep going further and further down it gets darker and darker but uh, the glow of Rexamoa is good enough to be able to help you see um, around you however you manage to Actually, uh, let me roll something real quick. Hmm. And also, what kind of plants are growing out of uh, Kipper's uh, path? What, what kind of plants, Kipper? See... What? What kind of plants? You're the plant guy. I am the plant guy. Uh, there's some sea rack. There's some bladder wart. There's some hmm. lotus that's uh, just starting to sprout. It's going to take a while for it to reach the surface. Mm -hmm. uh, but just generally a lot of that analogous uh, kind of like frilly seaweed that doesn't grow too tall I will say uh, with Kipper's trail of flowers you guys would be able to uh, get back easy because uh, you already have a path but that going is spectacular. in but going I'm also in, making an ecosystem. Yes, <laughs> precisely. You are helping the lakes, uh, fauna. Hopefully it's not invasive. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not invasive. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't know. But yes, uh, Ambrose, you guide the people to... Uh, through the water. You manage to find yourselves in the deeper end of the lake. You can see some... Maybe some uh, wrecked boats from locals in Mistbell. Some other smaller structures. Maybe some ruins of perhaps something of a... I don't know, previous inhabitants. Who knows if the merfolk themselves were involved in these ruins. Mm. Walking around, slowly uh, approaching the center of the lake, the water looks more and more um, further up as you guys can see the light of the water is starting to fade as you keep going deeper and deeper this is after all uh, one of the largest bodies of water in the whole land so the more you keep walking the deeper and the darker it's getting Rexmoa luckily for you uh, that's why I didn't make your roll with disadvantage, because you have, they have you, a very big uh, light source <laughs> for the moment. And uh, yeah, you manage to make yourselves um, further in. It takes you about a couple hours of walking and walking and avoiding smaller um, ravines below the, the lake 
you know, jumping over some rocky structures and generally avoiding too much of the of the fauna and the flora. Um, ever Kipper and Ambrose, you guys are doing just fine. You guys just feel like you're walking normally. Rex Moa, you are um, well. You're fine. You can breathe on the water. You can. Uh, however, your movements are not that um, fast. Mm. That's why you have uh, the penalty in dexterity based checks until you're out of the water, or if you decide to drink the potion. Hey, I mean, yeah. If if Rex Moa could be sweating right now, uh, they definitely would be because every step feels like they're. They're trudging through mud. Yes, precisely, precisely. You feel like your whole body is covered in a, in it, and uh, well, it's kind of difficult to move. However, You're probably having like a mad barometric pressure headache. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Um, however, you manage to make yourselves into a bit of a. I would call it a chasm. Well, you can see on the other side faint glow of bioluminescence. Um, you guys would notice that uh, this bioluminescence is concentrated. But the only real reason of why you guys would be in this place is... Uh, would be seeing this place is that... Of course, the Merfolk settlement must be nearby. Because around you, you haven't seen nothing like this it was just a normal bottom of the lake if anybody knew what that looked like of course you guys find yourself in this deep um chasm a bit of a jump to get through perhaps with some um with some help you could just you know swim across and stuff like that for now, would you guys mind dragging your tokens up into this side? Um, right here? Mm -hmm. Oh, where's my token? On your journal? Uh, oh, there it is. Top left, there you, go. You, you, can, you can probably find it. I should probably do more journals like here since I was leading. Yeah, you, you guys would be around this side. Uh, let me. Well, I cannot move you like this. Bio. Oh no! You should grab your. You see in your journal. Uh, just oh. grab the name, Kipper, and just okay, drag it in I there. You go, there you go. There you go. I'm gonna move you guys I'm, around here. I'm like, there we go. I'm playing with the octopus. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot a of freshwater octopus. There's a lot yeah. of little uh, little fishes and little creatures. Obviously, you are still leaving your trail of of, of uh, fauna as you walk. Mm. Uh, you guys can see some bioluminescence in uh, the animals as you guys have reached more of the bottom of the area. Down here in the chasm below, you can't see anything. Uh, perhaps some faint glowing of whatever animal is swimming around there. I like to imagine that the... Well, actually, I don't have to imagine this. A Rex Moa is definitely the most bioluminescent thing. Right now, <laughs> yes. In <laughs> fact, oh, you, are scary, you are scaring some of the other bioluminescent folk. I say folk. Mm. They are little guys, little animals. Mm. And that um, makes Rex Moa kind of sad. Yes. But all the non-bioluminescent yeah. fishies love you. The, the <laughs> other ones that are used to more uh, shallow waters uh which are very few in this uh in this place would go towards you and kind of investigate you of course you are a very weird glowing person hmm. they probably think i'm like a giant fish uh, maybe now maybe I, they do now have like a little school of minnows that is just your friends <laughs> Your happiness and playfulness, sadly, gets interrupted as you guys hear uh, the sound of um, something moving around. It is a very faint because of how, you know, sound and water works, but you guys can totally hear it. Moving from below this chasm and then slowly heading its way up from the darkness. You guys can see two creatures. Let me... Ka-boom. Uh, boom. 
appear. Oh, hello. Yes. Who is that? These creatures, let me hold on a second. Hold on a second. These creatures, half fish and half human. Unlike the merfolk, these ones are a little bit more human than fish with a lot of characteristics like, you know, fins, gills, both of them carrying a spear or a trident, I guess, uh, sharp teeth, uh, black beady eyes, looking at you as you approach this territory. They go. And in common, they say, what is this? Intruders? In our land? Let me give you guys a little handout of what these guys look like. But what are you guys doing in the meantime? I'll kind of like raise my hands as a, you know, very generalized offer of nah, I'm not going to do anything. We are not seeking trouble. Rather, the opposite. Hmm. We are here to make peace on behalf of Miss Bell, the town of both. <laughs> we bring bounty and light. I offer you bountiful greens that both you and the sea creatures can feast on. And hmm. my associate here offers you light. Although momentary and fleeting, maybe you can gain something from it. Uh, so I'm trying to do like a con artist <laughs> prof, like uh, hmm. like finessing my way. Wait, can I? Do I have hmm. to roll for this? Uh, are you trying to persuade them? I'm trying to make them not hate us. They can try to roll me a persuasion check. Okay, persuasion or charisma. Persuasion. Oh. I only have a one in persuasion. And this is what they would look like, by the way. Oh. Why they got a nose? They would have looked. Who gave them a nose? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> oh, shush. Okay, let's see. <laughs> oh, 14. With your persuasion. The two fish folk kind of look at each other and they go, Peace from the surface. Oh, but the surface attacked us. They kidnapped our own and killed our people. Why should we let you in? And not kill you on sight. We are all very sorry about that. But the perpetrators were not affiliated with us or the town. Mm. They were from elsewhere and came in and intruded on your space. Mm. We will be dealing with them, though we plan to give the actual perpetrators to you. As just as my associate here, Ambrose, was saying, we are not like those from who attacked you. They were humans from a town far away from here called Port Strail. These are radical and horrible people that we tried to stop, but alas, there was nothing we could do. Humans from the port. Hmm. And they're gonna look at each other again. You can see uh, they, they are communicating uh, in some sort of uh, ways that you guys can unhear because obviously they're looking at each other and they're kind of doing some gestures and stuff like that. So they have a sort of communication that you guys are not able to listen to. Oh. All right, I Rex Mawo is observing and trying to to see if he can gleam what they might be trying to say to one another. 
Um, let's see. Um, what you're trying to discern if what, what they're saying or what, 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 how is it? Uh, I'm just, I, I guess I'm trying to read their intent and trying to see if this situation is going to go south or not. Give soon. me an insight check then. Ooh, yeah, finally something I'm good at. Yes, sir. Ooh, oh, yeah. oh my okay, 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 okay. So with this role, Rex Moa, I can tell you, um, these guys don't look that friendly. Um, in fact, you can see that they're kind of gesturing at you in a not so friendly manner. It's in fact a little bit hostile, it's kind of grabbing their weapons and kind of like, you know, they're kind of communicating with each other and they're like, uh, you cannot understand what they're saying because it's clearly some sort of a telepathy kind of communication. Mm -hmm. But from watching the mannerisms and what they're doing, uh, yeah, these guys are definitely not on your side. Hmm. They're doing ninjutsus that only lizard folk understand. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> As they okay. stop their communicate. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, uh, upon seeing this, uh, Rex Moa starts taking out a few of the, the rocks that are keeping them to the to the ground like just barely enough where maybe like uh like passively they would like stay on the floor but they they definitely okay. are getting ready to try to move around okay 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 uh as they stop talking they would go you you will give us Fame. You will make us great warriors. So we, we will take you now to our queen. Well, not you, the other one says. And the other one replies, but your heads. Gross. And, uh, I want you guys to roll initiative, please. Oh, Okie dokie. As these guys are now nice. actively hostile towards you. So you gotta click on the token. Is there? Oh shit, I gotta... Oh! oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I may be in the front, but I'm going last, baby. Yes, sir. All right, let's see. Let me get the, the rolls for these little guys. I'm maybe not guys? affected by the water, but I'm still stone. Listen, man, that <laughs> it is what it is, man. All right. Where the heck? Oh, there the heck. Uh, okay, 13 initiative. Perfect, Ooh. perfect, perfect. Kipper, I'm going to add your initiative and uh, Rex Moa, your initiative too, please. Okay, yeah, so the way my... to make sure it goes in the turn order each time is you have to click on your token and then hit initiative. Yes. Oh, okay. oh. If you click on your right. token and oh, then hit initiative, it will just immediately do it. Should I roll again? I rolled a 14. Yep. Just no, by... I... Okay. Oh, wait, sorry. I didn't see it. My bad. Oh, I'm, yeah, I am. Because I didn't click on my token beforehand. Oh, I didn't, oh, I didn't see it. Okay, okay. Oops. I almost put 24. You don't got that much initiative. <laughs> I wish. I wish. Okay. So, this guy's going first, and he goes, for the queen, and let's Hi. see what he does. Hi. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. All right. He is going to, how much can I? Oh, just about, just about. Gods, no. Just about. He's going to swim at you, and he's going to try and hit you. With well, yeah, like a shit ton of attacks. Holy shit! He's gonna try and hit you with this spear. Now, I'm in. Ambrose does a. That is a nineteen. Uh yeah, a nineteen is gonna hit me. Oh boy. Oh boy. You take four points of piercing damage. Okay. Four points taken. Four points taken, that's about it for this guy. It is your turn, Rex Moa. 
Okay, is my movement speed hampered at all because I opted to not drink that potion? I was gonna say- You do say... have an actual swimming speed. Yes. Because you're a lizard folk. You are a lizard folk. You do have a swimming speed. So for you, it would okay. not be because it kind of don't really matter. I think okay. your swimming speed is the same as your walking speed, if I'm it correct. Is. So mm. it doesn't really matter for you. Okay. I will say though, you uh, will have disadvantage in attack rolls because um, those are mm. with your dexterity as well. Okay, so first Merfolk aimed for Ambrose and missed. Okay, so I'm just going to follow up and uh, I'm going to attack them as well. Okay, which uh, will be for your attack with disadvantage and uh, you can move your token. I'm assuming there you go. Yeah. You can roll me your attack with disadvantage, please. Yeah, and I'll be doing a quarterstaff two handed. All right, so disadvantage. Yes, sir. Let me just get the screen a little bit. Oh my goodness! Oh my Holy God. shit! Jesus! All right, roll for the damage. That definitely hits. Holy! All right. So God damn! You know, that disadvantage was nothing. Had so, nothing on you. <laughs> all right, so that would just be like oh, a you, roll. No, no. Or? You click on the click little up. orange okay. name. Damage. There time. you go. Oh, oh my goodness! Right. Holy shit! Okay, Not I'm still good much good much them. Yes, sir. You are able to. Yeah, there you go. You hit him with a quarter stab. You can tell it hurts. It really hurt these guys. Mm. Yeah, I imagine like I uh, I'll hold it almost like a spear and just uh, yeah. I, I jab them in the ribs. Yeah, it really hurt them. You can see like it kind of knocked the wind out of them. If, you know, they don't really breathe, but, you know, you know what I mean. Mm. <laughs> no, I mean, I technically speaking, out of them. <laughs> when you're when you're breathing water, you're technically still breathing oxygen. Yes. It just works differently. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Anything else? You still have your bonus action and, uh, well, assuming a little bit of movement. Uh, yeah, I would like to use my bonus action to do an unarmed attack. Of course, roll me with disadvantage. Right, let's see it. Let's see it. Dude, I'm disadvantaged. Jesus Christ. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Roll for damage. Holy. You may not have been the most perceptive lizard, but you are. God. Good with the hits. Dude, this is what I told you, man. You got the best stat. Dude, for those dude, who don't this know, poor, this poor fish. for <laughs> those who don't know, Rex Moa has two minus on his sheet. Because he got a 20 in dexterity. <laughs> That's why I said, my uh, goodness. It's a beautiful irony of my character that they, they don't like fighting, but fighting is the only thing that they're good at. Stat they got a 20 on dexterity and they got two minus. Normally, what I do is if they have two minuses, I will let you roll one stat again so you can get another plus. But I saw that 20 and I was like, nah, no, sir. You are not getting a reroll on that one. <laughs> You're right. Is that it for your turn? Yeah, that, that is it. That is all the yes, action. Sir. <laughs> okay, so this other guy over here, let's see, let's see. Is he in range or not? Just about. His swimming speed is 40 feet. Oh. Keeper. You are about to be hit with a spear as well. Does a... I'd like to roll to kiss him on the lips. Sadly, <laughs> that is... That is in your turn. <laughs> Does a 17 hit? Oh, okay. Hold on. Uh, if your armor my... class is the same or lower than the 17, it does hit. Okay. Then where is my armor? Oh, uh, where you put the oh, initiative right next to it? Oh, okay. Right next to initiative. Oh, it's 18. Damn. I don't have Holy. 18 to get armor class. Holy, you guys, you characters are very fucking strong, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it doesn't hit. And that's it for that guy. Kipper, it is your turn now. Hey, yo. Okay, let's see. You may kiss him on the lips as an action. <laughs> I don't actually want to. I just wanted to do it as a counter action. It's like, an attack. Like, ro like he attacks me and then like uh, I dodge and then give him, and a, give him a little kiss. 
Hey, for <laughs> flavor, you can say that you did that because he attacked you, and in fact, he missed. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. I cast, uh, confusion. Confusion. Can you link this? It's very easy to cast. You just remove your pants and do a dance. Ah, perfect. Of course. Okay. You know, I would certainly be confused even without the magical aspect. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Exactly. There is no magical aspect. I just, yeah, I just remove my pants and do a dance. Oh, wait, for real? It's not a spell? It's just an aspect? No, it's, not, it's, a, not, it's a not a spell. It's not a spell. It's just literally removing my pants. It's not a spell. It That's definitely hilarious. confuses and concerns. You yes, uh, Let's see. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna. I'm also gonna use my quarter staff. Alrighty, roll for your attack. You don't have disadvantage. You can roll normally. Oh, okay. You should have a little thingy in the middle of your sheet where it says attacks. Oh, okay. And Hold you on. can see quarter staff, one handed, quarter staff, two handed, and stuff like that. Quarter staff, two handed. Oh wait, I have a war hammer. You do, you are a cleric. Hammer. Yeah, I'm gonna use my big bonky. Let's see, normal roll, submit. That definitely hits, that roll for the roll. damage. Damn, my everybody hitting. Goodness. Damn. Okay, how how do I do you see it in, in the chat, yeah, okay. the little purple name that says war hammer? Oh yeah. In your chat, yeah, just click that and it will roll your damage. There you go. Okay, well, One. you know what? Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> you You're still hit him. Yet. Underwater. That doesn't even make sense. Why is the quarter staff doing like a the, 12? It is, the, the it is sadly warhammer. you got the worst roll like, possible. Uh, <laughs> you, you forgot to break in your warhammer first. <laughs> it made like a squeaky toy sound. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. were supposed to break your warhammer in half and then put it back together. Exactly. So, is that it for your turn? You still have your bonus action and movement. Uh, bonus action, one-handed Warhammer. <laughs> Sadly, that is not the case. <laughs> uh, one-handed quarterstaff? Nope. <laughs> that what is an I action, my friend. Action? If you have spells that can be used as a bonus action, sometimes certain uh, abilities for the classes can be used as a bonus action. Oh, okay, I don't know what I don't have any like spells that would yeah, for example, as uh, Green is saying in the chat healing word is a bonus action spell uh, I'm pretty sure like uh, Your rapid jump is a bonus action if I'm correct Oh, so I could like jump far away if you wanted to I don't remember specifically what it is uh, You can jump a number of you with uh, Okay, yeah, so look at that you can jump away without provoking opportunity attack Oh you know what? No matter where I'm gonna go, you're gonna have the fish man follow me, so I'm staying put <laughs> near other people. Listen, I'm just making you fo follow the people that make sense to. For example, right now, this guy is gonna be very angry at Rex Moa. <laughs> mm. Is that it then for your turn? It's one to fish. Uh, I think so. Can I okay. at least, as a bonus action, put my shield in front of me so the next attack totally me as totally totally you can uh okay. guard with your shield and uh i'm bros your turn let's see if you can keep the the, the streak of <laughs> good hits going and not happening i'll take great sword off the sling i'll just say oh you dug this groove and i'll go ahead and just like try and i'll stab like underneath him and then swing upward okay 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 roll me for your attack yes uh get sword. It's 11. <laughs> that unfortunately just misses uh i knew that was gonna happen um we took well, all the good rolls you did I imagine the probably gonna go after Rex Mola, so I'm not gonna use my ability. Uh, with that, uh, that will be the end of my turn. I don't know what else I can do. Actually, you know what? Oh, second wind. That's what I'll do. You got second wind? Okay. Yes, I'll take my bonus action. Yep, um, rule you 1d10 plus a, 1. Yeah, I don't know if there's a way for me to, like, do that on my sheet. I don't, I don't setup, think but... there is, unless you have it set up. But yeah, it's 1d10 plus your fighter level. Okay, 6. 6 so points of healing. Full HP. 
Perfect, perfect, and perfect. And I will mark out my second wind. Okay, and that will be my turn. Exactly. Okay, so this guy, Rex Moore, he's kind of angry at you. So he's going to do a final, final um, thing, and he's going to do a multi-attack. One oh with its God. bite and one with its spear. As a final effort to take you down, because he is looking very rough, by the way. So, first attack, a 12. Does that hit? Uh, it does not. It misses. Second attack. I think Smell Apollo has a good AC with that 50. Damn, a uh, 10. Decks. That does not hit. So, this you man be on that one. <laughs> has given up. He is surrounded and uh, he's not very good at hitting. So that's where he's going to end his turn. And it he's, goes to he's you. He's pretty dumb. <laughs> yes, he probably is. Brex Moy, you're up. Uh, so, okay, so when when you say that they've given up, like, like are they removing themselves from the battle? Or are they, like, being incapacitated? Um, no, they're just kind of, like, accepting their fate. Oh, okay. You so... could, if you wanted to incapacitate them instead of, hmm. um, instead of killing them, you can uh, declare that your attacks are non-lethal. And that will, you know, incapacitate them, but not kill them. Like you yes. guys did on the merfolk before. Well, yes. oh, the wait. fish folk. I will, I will attempt to to incapacitate them okay. non-lethally. All right, roll for your attack. Mm. All right, so I'll do another two-handed quarterstaff. Yes, with sir. Disadvantage. With disadvantage, exactly. All right, let's see if well, the law of mm. averages catches up with me. Come on. That still Ooh. hits. Holy shit. Five. <laughs> oh my goodness. Roll for your damage. I will say you're definitely going to knock him out. Mm. So yeah, I, oh, I, I dodge uh, through totally. spear and I I do a maneuver where I like I I deflect the spear upwards and then I come back with the other side of the quarter staff and, and I just smack. I like, yeah, yeah, smack the yeah, side of its head. Him, smack him in the head. And you can see him like stop moving and he's just kind of floating around there unconscious now. You still have your movement and your bonus action. What do you want to do? Okay, and yeah, I would like to... I'll help Kipper out. So I'll move closer to the, the second mer person, and I will do a an arm strike. All right, roll for your damage. Sorry, not for your damage, for your attack with uh, disadvantage. Yeah. All right. Say, let's say, uh, yeah, I'm trying to do my signature flying kick, which always ends well for, for Kipper. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> you shouldn't have said that. Oh, my goodness. Kipper, <laughs> dexterity save, please. <laughs> Again? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Actually, no, hold on, hold on. <laughs> um, hold on. Kipper or a bit more... Somebody call mm. it high or low. Kipper, it's it's your your fate. I'm already in the air. Yeah. So. Wait, high or low? Yeah, call it. Just call it. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip a coin over here. Call it high or low. Uh, high. Okay. On phonics. Okay. Sadly, it was low. Kipper, you're about to be be hit. Give me a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Let's see. Normal. Yes. You just, just was able to dodge it. I was about to say, if you surpassed that eight, you would be dodging it. So you just were able to dodge it. He like it. raises my ears. Yeah, he just turning yeah, around. Your, obviously, your, your beautiful, fluffy bunny ears. Obviously, Rex I mean, is not doing very well. His, his movements are sluggish and, you know, he still hits like a freaking truck. And he tried to doing it, but uh, his floating is not helping. So his kick was, uh, you know, moved to a side and you just barely were able to duck yeah. under it. Yeah, I do look back at you once I land and I kind of grimace and uh, and I do like a little shrug that's like, sorry. Mm. I'm just like, oi, are you okay, old man? <laughs> so this I just guy. Check, uh, yes. Did Villa kill or just knock out? Incapacitate, yes. Okay. He is in capacity. I'm going to put a little, a little sleepy guy here. There you go. I was swinging my hammer with the intent of kill. And <laughs> hey, that's that's fine. Strike. Listen, you can do it with the intent of kill as long as it does. This HP doesn't reach zero without the intent of kill. You can have him at one HP and incapacitate it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this guy, 
he's gonna do as his multi-attack one to each kipper you're about to be hit with a spear and rex moa with a bite so kipper wow. does a that is a six that does not hit and rex moa does a that is a five. Oh my goodness, you guys get the luck today. <laughs> Nothing and hits. These fish guys are very uncoordinated. These fish mm -hmm. guys are very uncoordinated at this point. And that's what he's yeah. gonna do. Kipper, you're up. They've been hitting too much of that fish franzia. Yes, sir. Kipper, you are up. It is your oh, turn. Me. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just saw greenies uh emoji in the, the <laughs> chat and i got distracted okay let's see uh i'm gonna go for if i do can i do two separate attacks with one handed or... sadly no you uh well you always get um multi-attacks with certain classes later it was as you level up Right now, it's oh. you're level one, so you're just gonna get one attack. I'm gonna much. bludgeon him with a two handed war hammer. All uh, right. But with the intent to not kill. All right, roll me for your attack, please. Okay. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Rex so Moa. Does not hit. Give me a dexterity. <laughs> well, actually. What should I make you roll? Because you already have more than... Even if you roll a one, <laughs> you're going to roll more than three. <laughs> I just start spinning <laughs> with the hammer. Whoa, whoa. Every so just I, like, I will say to make this more interesting. Uh-huh. Call it high or low. Uh, I'm going to say low. Low. Let's see what the fate has in store for you with a little it's coin high. flip. It is, in fact... Hi. <laughs> so, Kipper, would you mind rolling for damage? Oh, no. You okay, take four points of bludgeoning damage, Rex Moa. Oh, seriously? Oh, wow. yes. I Your thought like that wouldn't hit him. Your swing goes very wide and the fist just ducks under it and you just kind of bash him in the side of the head. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I wasn't looking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you were all focused on the fish to know, to see each other's attacks. We need to not only better. Not only is he blinded by his utter brilliance, mm -hmm. he is also sluggish because of his pride. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> is that it for your turn, Kipper? I think he's sluggish because of Hammer. That's yes, yeah, honestly, correct. Maybe. <laughs> I, you know what? You could say he got slow. What can I even... You know, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. Uh. I guess cure wounds or healing word. They're both the same amount of mana. Yes, but uh, one of them is a bonus. Uh, healing word is a bonus action. Yeah, okay, so you so already used your do action. healing word okay. on uh, Brex Moa. Of course. Roll for that thing. You just gotta click on it and it will give you the healing amount. Okay. Make sure to tick down. Uh, wait, do you even have Am any mana remaining? One? Yes, you are. Well, uh, let's see. I did mend. And no, mending is a cantrip. cantrip. Yeah, it doesn't take any mana. Cantrips, yeah, cantrips don't oh, okay. cost anything. I should have mana. Because what did you do last time? I'm pretty I sure. I know you cast one spell. Oh, you did bless. Rest, no, you don't have any mana exactly because you guys have not rested. <laughs> Well, oh, I, you I, did I you did bless and you did uh, a healing word. Oh too. yeah, okay. Then you would be out of yeah. spells. Yes. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I thought that we rested, so I thought that not it was not quite yet. Okay, I have. Can I take a twenty-minute power nap? <laughs> <laughs> no, within the combat. Right <laughs> so if that's it for your turn, <laughs> Ambrose, <laughs> you're up. <laughs> I'll kind of try to like crack my arm slightly as I wrap around, uh, failing at having hit this one. Uh, I'll have the uh, glowing veins on my body kind of glow a bit as I take the sword and I just kind of attempt to do. I attempt to take like the uh, the parry bits of these white hand do and just kind of slam it against the back of his head. Mm-hmm. Attempting a non-lethal strike. 
Uh, okay, roll me with advantage because you are flanking now. Oh, okay. Advantage. That and definitely hits. Hit. Definitely, okay. definitely. Okay. That will be 12 slashing damage. Indeed, indeed, indeed. You can see the creature is looking very hurt. Very, very hurt now. Anything and else? I'll just. I'll go ahead and just. I'm not going to do anything else, but I'm going to say. Surrender. We will not kill you, but you will bring us to your queen. Interesting, interesting. Now that it is his turn, I'm going to do a little roll here. See if he wants to surrender or not. Just a simple intelligence check. To see if this guy is smart enough <laughs> to surrender or not. That is caught. Hold on a second. That is a 19. So I will say this man is intelligent enough. He goes, wait, 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 wait. Please. Do not kill me. I will take you to my queen. Hmm. When he says that, I'll just smile as if none of this even happened and just said, Good. Do not worry, your friend over there is not dead. And I will start to... I, I was technically still actually carry my sword because it's kind of put right. away. <laughs> So, I will ask this before we end any sort of combat. Kipper and Rex Moa, are you guys still being hostile to him after what he said? Uh, uh, no. Yeah, I, I'm not hostile either. I will I will take this fish person at their word. All right. Yeah, and yeah I'm just kind of like, yeah. So then we are out of initiative and the man surrenders. Awesome. Yeah, he's kind of an easy book to read. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to remove the X from this guy. He's just knocked out. So, he's like the opposite of the old wizard man. He's going to go, I will take you to my queen. Follow me. And I he's will gonna... go ahead and pick up his friend. Okay, okay, okay. I'll pick up his friend. And I will follow him. Okay. If you need to, like, uh, time up to your back or hoist him up there's like some hemp and rope I have in my yeah, yeah I have this lovely thing that I procured from the quartermaster called shackles I'm gonna use this oh look at that oh so you're gonna shackle that, the guy that's not a great uh way to enter it's like hey we we want to stop this conflict but also we like I mean, I feel like it's a little more professional than hemp and rope, at least. I was just thinking, like, it just, uh. like, underneath his butt and his back, just so he wouldn't <laughs> fall off. Oh, like, like a backpack? He's kind of yeah. like a backpack. So, what would it be? Would it be shackles or rope? Mm. Hmm. How, both of them sound like pretty exciting options. <laughs> I mean, hey, oh, <laughs> listen. <no>. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. I'm lurking and I'm stalking when you least expect it. How about, uh, uh, he, he is knocked out. How about we just go with nothing? I'll be able to carry him just fine. He is floating, yeah. so you can uh, totally um, just, like, drag him. Rex oh, is yeah, you could, uh, in, the, in the beating they if, give him. Okay, hold on. What if you just tied a little bit of the hemp and rope around his foot and this just carried him around like a balloon? Yeah, I mean, you could totally do this. Like I said, he is just floating. I am I, not going to do that. I'm just going to, like, <laughs> hold on to, I guess, I where his waist would be. It. I want to do the Shrek. Hey, the Shrek yeah. frog balloon, oh. yes. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, that's balloon. hilarious. No. That's hilarious. But yeah, easy enough. You are able to just grab, hold on to whatever limb you want and uh, you just kind of drag him along he's floating uh it is on the deep end of the water so gravity works differently you guys are easy enough to be able to to take him and this guy is going to take you into this chasm uh you guys would see that he would not go above it but instead just kind of jump down and uh, land on a little area right below here we don't have a, a, a image for this but it's like a little cavern below it uh you guys were able to follow easy enough 
it's not a it's not a difficult place to to you know to trek through you manage to jump down and enter this little cavern and this cavern will go a little bit forward and then up into whatever this chasm is well this is like i said a very big jump so any normal creature that would that was not swimming would totally not be able to make this jump these guys obviously can but knowing that you guys are clearly not swimming they will take you through this route once you guys come out of this um kind of cave kind of entrance you guys would witness this oh wow over That's here pretty. A large coral reef. Well, not necessarily made out of coral, but uh, some stones and some other underwater fauna with a lot of bioluminescence uh, in it, showing uh, what seems to be a very large merfolk settlement. As you are being taken by these other fish folk, you can see around the place all the merfolk swimming around. They kind of glance at you. Some of them hide. Some of them just, you know, go out their merry way, not even noticing you. Uh, you. You can see some fish folk like the ones you just fought and the ones on the... Like the ones on the on the festival some are looking a little bit more you know able combat able others are more like squires and l small little warriors you know the disposable kind uh you can also see that some of these fish folk are very armored and some of them are not looking more like the guys that just attacked you a few moments ago you guys slowly make your way inside, and we're gonna end the session there. Hey. Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will say, however, um, technically, uh, we were gonna go a little bit further, and I was supposed to give you something, but now you guys have leveled up. Oh, hey. and to level two. Yippee! Um, now, now if I miss, I can miss again with action surge. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, missing twice in one turn. Yes. If you guys need help with your level ups, I will be, you know, on the Discord and everything. Uh, I'm assuming you guys have stuff to do right now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go raid somebody. And okay, we're okay. just going to have some fun. So great, 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 yes, great, yes, yeah, yes, right. yes, 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 yes. You'd be right. That stuff is my my bed and my toothbrush. <laughs> yes. What's up? What's up, Kipper? What's up? What's up? Huh? Yes. Uh, uh, so Kipper was just. Oh, I thought, I thought I thought yeah. said I thought he said wait. Sorry, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For the people in the vod, say goodbye, guys, as we go and raid somebody. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye -bye, Catch you next time. Hell yeah. Bye -bye. We'll see you on the next one.